Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Gaming News Weekly Live. It's been a while. It's been a while. Gaming News Weekly has been uh, on the show for quite a bit. It's been on the show for quite a bit, but I'm back at it again. You know what it is. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe. I got my water with me, so you know I'm ready to talk. And uh, the gaming landscape as of late, the news of it, has been weird as hell. It's been a whole lot of controversies going on. The Sweet Baby Inc. thing was happening. I'm like... Why? Why are they doing it? Then Microsoft, oh my god, the Microsoft one is fucking horrible, bro. There's been great game releases, there's been alright game releases. And then, uh, you know, there's been a whole lot of talk about Xbox and where they're trying to go with the next generation of Xbox consoles. And I'm here for it, bro, so make sure they like button, subscribe. Because we're going to start off with the the weakest of the news there was some there were some leaks there were some leaks of a a white series x like on a stilt like mounted to a table and they're like oh xbox console leaked is this is the second digital series s that is leaked online are people going are people going to throw this concept away when are they going to throw it away it doesn't make sense this is the second remember the second Leaked the Xbox Series X console that's all digital. The second one. One with cylinder. They're like, oh, look, Microsoft console leaked. It's coming next year. Now, all of a sudden, it's just a white version of the black one that we have that leaked. And I'm like, anybody could have made that bitch custom and leaked that picture online. Anybody could have made that. It is so strange how fast the internet cling on to something that leaks with no confirmation at all. They just, they cling on to it so fast. Did talking about outlets, everybody is like, "Oh, look, there's a leak from Xbox. This is your console. It's coming this year." They keep saying it, bro. The same thing with the PS5 Pro. How do they know the PS5 Pro is real? I've heard so many conflicting stories about the PS5 Pro. Like, "Oh, it's this powerful. Oh, it's this powerful. What could do this?" None of it is confirmed to be true. But everybody's talking about it. Everybody's saying things. And I'm like, can we just stop, bro? Let people confirm news nowadays. Nah, they don't want to do that. They don't want to confirm fucking news. They want to speculate hard as hell. And that's exactly what the gaming industry has turned into. It's turned into a whole bunch of AAA bullshit, no creativity, and speculation. From the gaming media, the journalism, the fucking developers. Everybody's just, just, just doing nonsense, bro. Nobody's really passionate about anything in the gaming industry no more. And it shows. That's why they go to companies like Sweet Baby Inc. What are they doing, bro? I don't understand. The gaming industry is so trash right now. And then all the all the creative people that come out, people want to talk shit on them. Like Microsoft did with fucking <laughs> with Stellar Blade. Oh my god. Stellar Blade was supposed to come to Xbox too. Sony pulled that shit and it was hey, it was a good move by them. I'm still upset that Stellar Blade is not coming to Xbox no more, but um, it's fine. Stellar Blade actually showed up, and it looks pretty fucking good. The demo came out. Is it? Did it come to PC the same day? Hold on. I don't think it came to PC the same day, did it? Oh, no, it's not going to PC. Not yet, anyway. It's going to go to PC eventually. It's not going to PC yet. But, I mean, when it does, I'm definitely going to pick it up there. Because Stellar Blade actually looks like a pretty like a pretty good game. I expected it to be just like a hack and slash third-person action game. Like a lot of them are. But it's kind of like Wulong. It has a, like a little parry system. It has a little, like a little depth to the combat. Not a lot, but like it has some. That it's not completely a Souls like. It's not completely like one of those games that's gonna, you know, beat you down and all that. But it has some, it has some, some tactic to it, some skill to it. I kind of liked how it looked. Like the demo came out finally because it came out once and then got pulled from the store and then they re they released it now. And a demo, hey, it looks like it's gonna be pretty good. Um, not that many people are playing it though, which is the thing that. I don't understand because like if I got a demo, 
of a game. I'm playing it, motherfucker, bro. I'm playing it. I'm playing the hell out of it too, just to just to get a feel of the game. Because people not releasing demos no more. There's companies that are hiding their games behind the paywall of buying this motherfucker to know what it looks like. They're not giving early review codes of games no more. They literally just want to make money on the game as fast as they can with no ramifications for what they actually release. And it's kind of, it's, it's egregious out here. And it's not to, it's not to be say like, all oh, everybody got to give out review codes. Everybody got to make demos. That's not what I'm saying. It's just like, they need to be more fucking demos out here, bro. Just so I can play them bitches. Just so I can play them. I've played a whole lot of demos as of recently. Steam Next Fest is amazing. That's why Steam is probably the best storefront. And it's probably why Xbox wants Steam to come to Xbox. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's unmatched in every way possible. Creativity lives on Steam. Nowhere else. Creativity lives on Steam. It lives on the PC platform. And if they want creativity, they kind of got to go there to get it. Because consoles can't manufacture that same creativity no more. Why? Because everything's a money move. Nobody has passion for gaming anymore on consoles. Like when they're building for consoles anyway. When they're building for these console makers. That's why they go out and they buy these second party deals. They buy third party deals. Because they don't have that at house. Nobody does. Sony definitely doesn't. Everything is a third person action game. Because that's what's making them money. Microsoft has more diversity than Sony does. But it's, it's still money plays going on. And then their diversity thing that came out. It just looks fucking horrible, bro. It was good, Mo. We just, we just, we just talking about some, uh, some, some uh, fucking uh, Xbox rumors. Those, did you see? Yeah, you on time this time. You early this time. Where's my charger? I need to charge this watch. This motherfucker been dead on my wrist for like a day. I need to charge it. So I was high key almost late to my own show. Because I was playing uh, Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> I was playing Dragon's Dogma and I was almost late to my own show. That's kind of wild, bro. I usually start these kind of earlier. But I was almost late. But, but no, I'm here. I'm here. But the White Series X. That motherfucker looks stupid. <laughs> it looks dumb. It looks bad. And it's just another leak console from Xbox. Just another leak console that people just run with. That's like, oh, it's real. Like anybody could have made that. Anybody could have taken those pictures and put it online. You said so nine out of ten. What Dragon's Dogma? Dragon's Dogma is a phenomenal game. I don't know what it rated like, uh, commercially, but I mean, I've been waiting ten years for this game. I bought the original one three times. <laughs> <laughs> so I've bought Dragon's Dogma three times. So I've been waiting on Dragon's Dogma 2 for a long time. I don't know what it rated commercially. I kind of want to look it up now. God damn it. Spell, bro. Let's go to... Let's go to... Damn, the Kong movie, the, the Godzilla Kong movie got a 47. That's kind of sad. That is kind of sad. DD2. Oh, it got a fucking 85. That's not bad. That's not bad. I thought it would be better, higher. It has an 89 on PC. And it's kind of crazy. It has an 89 on PC. Where that's where all the bad news for Dragon's Dogma is coming from. So, so how the hell did the critics? It has an it has a seven it has eighty five on PlayStation, eighty six on Xbox, and eighty nine on PC. Somebody gave that motherfucker a thirty. You said solid nine out of ten. Yeah, I mean it is definitely a solid nine out of ten for me. Hold on, let me see if I can pull these reviews up because some I reviewers bro like inconsistent reviewers like i hate them passionately hate them because i swear i don't think they know how to write reviews for game hold on let me see if this comes up i gotta like resize it so every time or am i
What is this reviewer talking about, bro? It's outworldly hostile to his audience. It knows its audience. The motherfuckers that played the first game, they didn't want them to, to dumb it down for more people. Like, <laughs> what are you saying, bro? It said a game designed with a purpose to waste players' time, which Capcom makes time saver by her transactions. <laughs> All the more sick of it. That is crazy, bro. Because the game doesn't just give your ass a handout all the time but it does give you the option to pay your way to be <laughs> to be time saved because you think it's a waste of time that's that's the problem people think dragon's dog is a waste of time because they don't have they don't have consistent fast travel because you literally have to explore the world that they built for you oh you're wasting gamers time Whose time is wasted? You enjoy the world you go through in Dragon's Dogma with the pawns, bro. That's what Dragon's Dogma has been about. Ten years later, people are complaining that, oh, you have to walk from place to place. This is wasting my time. And they let you buy the, the crystals to teleport. But you still have to build your own teleportation system. The, do they just forget that part? That's kind of wild, bro. They really just talk shit about a game franchise. That's wild. You said, kind of funny, gave it a negative review. Or at least talked about it negatively. Not sure if they... I mean... People that didn't play the first... See, I said this when Dragon's Dogma had their showcase. I wish I had, like, a clip of what I said. But I'm like, Dragon's Dogma is going to get shit on by a whole lot of casual people because it's in the casual spotlight. Dragon's Dogma 1 was not well-received by the public. That's why Capcom didn't make a second one. It wasn't commercially successful. But everybody that played Dragon's Dogma kind of loved the game. That's why the name went so hard when they announced the second one 10 years later. And the fan base was reignited. People start playing Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen all over again. They re-released that motherfucker on next-gen console. Well, not next-gen console, but you know, last-gen's consoles. And to see all these people be upset about Dragon's Dogma being itself and giving it a goddamn 30 because of it, you can you can tell they they don't want the experience Dragon's Dogma offers. They, they don't want that experience because the first game and the second game are exactly the same. In experience, anyway. You said it's a lot better than Baldur's Gate. Yes, it's... See, the Baldur's Gate 3 thing, bro, is Baldur's Gate is a bad fucking game. Baldur's Gate is not a good game. I know, compared to Metacritic... The critics online, the the game awards, the the general public, they think Dragon. I mean, they think Baldur's Gate is amazing. No, Dra Baldur's Gate is trash, bro. Combat fucking sucks. The story might be kind of good, but it's broken up horribly. It's stretched out. Is it is it is elongated for no fucking reason, bro. And my Act Three still keep crashing. I can't even finish the game. My Act 3 is broken as hell, bro. I can't even finish the game. Baldur's Gate is such a such a bad fucking game. And Larian Studios got, got way more praise than they should have. All because they didn't want to give it to Starfield. That's exactly what it was. They didn't want to give it to Starfield. Sort of like, we have to give it to somebody. And who's around? Larian Studios, Baldur's Gate 3. That's, that is exactly it. That is exactly it. Most people that love Baldur's Gate hasn't finished the game. Probably haven't even gotten to Act 2. They played Act 1 for 70 hours. And they're like, yeah, bro, look, this game is amazing. No, it's not, bro. No, it's not. And Larian Studios walking away from Baldur's Gate is probably the best decision they can ever make. Because they're not making more Baldur's Gate content. Which is good, because they don't own the license. The same thing happened with Bioware. They made the first two of them. People don't even know Bioware created Baldur's Gate. That is how crazy the Baldur's Gate IP is. Bioware created that IP, and nobody knows that. 
People think that, oh, Baldur's Gate just, you know, it's just a thing. And Larian Studios made it popular. No, it was a big deal when Baldur's Gate was created by the goats of RPGs. <laughs> but it was taken from them. And they created their own things. They created Dragon Age. They created Mass Effect. And they went on to do amazing things. Larian Studios, they have Divinity already. Baldur's Gate was a big name title to get them some recognition because their own titles didn't give that to them. But Divinity has always been a better game than Baldur's Gate. I made that video and a lot of Baldur's Gate fans were upset. Because I said Larian Studios made better games before Baldur's Gate. Divinity 1 and 2 were better than Baldur's Gate 3. By miles, bro. By miles. Besides having the funding of a big ass corporation to let them build the game and have it early access for fucking three years. Other than that. Nigga, Divinity 2 is a better game than Baldur's Gate 3, and I still stand on that. I I still haven't finished Baldur's Gate 3 because of it. The game is still broken as hell. Larian hasn't fixed it. Larian hasn't fucking fixed it. But uh let the let the meta critics tell you. Let the game and critics tell you. Let the motherfucking game awards tell you. Baldur's Gate is a flawless game. Nothing's wrong with it. Nothing bad could be about that game. But then they'll tell you. Oh, Dragon, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a 30. Because you don't like how long it takes for you to walk from settlement to settlement. And oh, somebody can buy port crystals when you can just find port crystals by playing the game organically like a normal fucking human being. But oh, you can buy the port crystals, so this game is a 30. That is craziness. That is insane talk from a fucking gaming journalist, bro. I don't even know who the fuck the Jimquisition is. But giving this motherfucker a 30 because you don't like something they did versus actually telling people if the game's good or not is fucking wild. And that's my gripe with critics everywhere. Because, yeah, it's your opinion. But you still got to be kind of... What do you call it? Damn, I forget the I forget the words for it, bro. But you still got to be kind of like transparent with the actual fucking game i'm not gonna tell you just because i don't like something it's trash because i can play something like okay it's not for me but it could be a good fucking game hold on let's let's go back to the oh damn hold on reset the motherfucking chat my bad you said, would the game get better reviews if it was more DNI friendly? Probably. <laughs> Pro but I mean, the fact that Baldur's, not Baldur's Gate, that, that Dragon's Dogma is so DNI friendly. It's so DNI friendly and it's, and it's funny as hell how, I mean, it's, it's, it's not pressed on people. And that's how casual it is to be DNI friendly. Because they don't have to go out their way to say like, hey, we're DNI friendly. Look, we can do all this. But it is. In all reality, it is DNI friendly. And I can I can legit show you right now. Hold on. I could go to the game and show you how DNI friendly this shit is. Hold on, let me turn this motherfucking console on. Look at this shit. Hold on, hold on, look at this shit. This this is this is me playing the game. Where my boy yet? Look, this this is my boy Lee. I am attentive and loyal, and prefer to remain by your side. In battle, I shall follow your lead. Lee got, Lee got the most <laughs> masculine voice in the fucking world, but feminine presenting, and no, like they they won't talk about that. They won't talk about that. How that's that's in the game. That's in the game, bro. I shall never forget the agony I felt at the. That's coronation. in the game. Like, what do you mean? And Lee is an amazing pawn. This this nigga puts in fucking work. I would never put that nigga off because he, he's a girl that sounds like a nigga. No, that nigga Lee's good. I keep that nigga on the team. Whoever created him, kudos to them. But, it, I mean, they won't talk about that. They want you to act like they're DNI friendly, but not actually be DNI friendly. Dragon's Dogma 2 is actually DNI friendly. <laughs> actually DNI friendly in every way possible. In every way possible, you can make anybody you want. You can make anybody you want. Put them bitches in the game. Did you see they put Asmin Golden in the game? Like the YouTubers? They asses in the game. And I'm like, what the fuck are they doing here? And it looks exactly like them. 
they got the hunchbacks and everything. You know, they nigga only play games and, and make streams. But it's so wild. They would never mention the shit like that. But they, but they but they cry about, oh, you could buy poor crystals. Still restricted to 10, but if you spend $30, you can buy 10 of them. And still have to walk around the world to put them around. To actually teleport to them. Come on now. The controversy behind Dragon's Dogma 2 is some of the fakest outrage you can possibly have in gaming. But casual gamers, they only listen to critics. And when the critics say something, like, oh, it's a fucking 30. The only, the only real gripe I've heard online is that the game is fucking broken on PC. Yeah, the white Xbox looks fake as hell. It looks so fucking fake. Like, anybody could create that and post pictures of it. But they run with it and say it's a leak. And I'm like, I thought it was supposed to be black and cylinder. The Microsoft-owned fucking document said it would have been. But now, all of a sudden, the, the, the white version with no disk drive is the leak now. These gaming critics, they love to be fooled by random niggas on Twitter. And they keep doing it. They keep doing it. The same thing like with Starfield's going to PS5. And they end up being a lie. A random nigga on Twitter made it up. They ran with that story for weeks. They ran with it for weeks. But yeah, let's get let's get back to the gaming news. Phil Spencer, bro, he was talking at GDC, 10-year anniversary of him joining Xbox, becoming the leader, and saving Xbox from intimate doom. He saved that little console right there from being destroyed. You said it's crazy how things become news in gaming journalism. Yeah, because they just make, bro, they make shit up. So either they make a hit piece, either they make a hit piece talking shit about Xbox, <laughs> <laughs> to get clicks or they run some fake ass news because somebody said it on Twitter. There's no journalism going on no more, bro. Like I was hearing about the shit that was happening in Kotaku, how Kotaku was kind of like falling apart and now they have to do like freaking game walkthroughs and shit to like save their their website. They're not just making hit pieces no more. They actually got to do like fucking walkthrough guides and shit. Like they're making guides on Kotaku now. They actually have to play games on Kotaku now. And I'm like, how many videos have I made where I wanted Kotaku to just stop making fucking articles? How many reaction articles did I have that came from Kotaku journalists? There has to be. I need to just go through my, go through my fucking YouTube channel and make a playlist of all the journalists that I've just shit on over the years of being a fucking gaming journalist YouTuber, bro. I just need to go through and just make a playlist of all of them. You said watch Kotaku lie in a game. I mean, yeah, but then it'd be so much easier to call them out because anybody that played the game actually, they they read the fucking Kotaku guide and be like, you did not play the fucking game because this is not in it. This doesn't happen. But yeah, there would be some shit that happens. They just lie in the fucking in the guide or they just go look up somebody else's guide and they just plagiarize it. Kotaku, they dirty as hell. They've been dirty in the gaming industry a long time. I mean, IGN's the same way. They would literally have a have a like a fucking a, a inside ten minutes of a game that nobody else gets to play yet. They get to play it first for like ten minutes, and they'd be trash at it. They'd be garbage at it, and it's like y'all get paid to tell us if games are good or not, but you can't even play games. It's crazy, and this is. These are the people that, that gets to rate our favorite games. These are the people with the voice. They get to rate our favorite games, bro. Legit trash bags that can't even pick up a controller properly. Remember, they had that, they had that man. <laughs> they had that man, Jim Ryan, holding a controller like this on a picture for Sony. Come on now, bro. Come on now. These are the people in controller gaming. That's why what. Like, I don't care what nobody on the internet says. Phil saved Xbox, and whatever Phil does to Xbox since he's been in control is fine with me. Because Phil actually plays fucking games. You know what it is to be a gamer, bro. He came from the bottom, nigga. Being a game tester and shit, bro. Sitting in the basement. 
to now CEO of Microsoft Gaming. Whatever the fuck Phil does to the Xbox now, I'm here for it. I'm here for it because he he cares more about gaming than anybody in the gaming industry. But I'll uh, let people tell you, oh, Phil's lying. Come on now, what Phil got to lie about? Jim was lying, bro. That's why he held the fucking controller like this. That nigga don't know how to play a game. That nigga ain't never played a game in his life. Herman ass definitely don't play fucking games. He's just happy he's not fired. You said they're going to kill the Xbox brand off just like they killed the Windows phone? Yeah, hey, that's kind of wild, bro, because I love Windows phones. I love Windows phones so much. But the thing that killed Windows Phone is that Microsoft wanted to control all of it. And that was the problem. Microsoft wanted their phones to run Windows. Just like, I mean, Xbox runs Windows and all that. Yeah, 10 years ago, Phil saved Xbox. This is the 10-year anniversary of Phil literally saving Xbox. It's been 10 great years of Phil reign over Xbox, bro. And then he passed it off to, you know, Sarah. Sarah Bond runs at Xbox now. People don't really talk about that, but she's in charge of Xbox now, not Phil. But, I mean, Phil saved Xbox 10 years ago. And he continues to save Xbox every chance he gets. So if you want to put fucking games on PlayStation, I don't give a fuck, bro. He can do that, nigga. He saved Xbox. We would have no Xbox. Or I would have no Series X right here in front of me if Phil didn't save Xbox 10 years ago. So I'm not going to be like, oh, Phil's messing up Xbox. No, he saved it. So his vision for fucking Xbox, whatever it is, I'm going to see that shit through to the end, nigga. Because the Xbox One would have been my last Xbox, bro. Mass Effect would be gone. Pinnacle Station would be gone. People don't think about that. They just think about console war nonsense. Like, nah, nigga. Like, this is the platform I want to play on. And Phil built that. That's what I'm rocking with. So if this man was like, I want to bring Steam to Xbox. That's a beautiful fucking decision. You know how many games I got on Steam? Games I paid for. They're on Steam right now. You said soon that shit won't matter. Facts. But if, if he really wants to bring Steam to Xbox, I'm here for that shit. Because not only would I be able to use Quick Resume on my fucking library of Steam games I don't get to fucking play no more because I'm usually playing on Xbox. All the games that choose to skip Xbox for no fucking reason, I would just play them bitches on Steam. I would literally just play them bitches on Steam. There's no reason... Why I wouldn't? I know there was plenty of videos where people was like, oh, I'll just buy everything from the Steam library and not buy anything from the Xbox library. I mean, they still going to get their 30%. They probably still going to get 30% of every sale, no matter what you buy. They're going to get 30% of that sale because, you know, that's how platform holders work. And if Steam's agree to that, I mean, it's a win-win for both of them. But creativity lives on Steam. So all the creativity is on Steam. It's nowhere else because nobody's funded creativity no more. Microsoft does from time to time. That's why we got Grounded. That's why we got Pentiment. That's why we got, uh, what is it called? There was another game. Because they funded those. They funded those little like creative projects. And it's, that's cool. But they're not going to always fund those. They're going to make games that make money. Because that's what they want to do. But on Steam, you know, it's kind of like the YouTube of gaming over there. There's people that just create shit because they feel like it. And they post it on Steam, hoping that somebody buys it. And I'm like, this like they are just creative minds everywhere. Even if it's some crazy wild shit. I've seen like fucking Hitler games, Donald Trump games, like just random ass shit like that on Steam. And I'm fine with that, bro. Because there's somebody just showing off their creativity, flexing their little coding muscles. Like, yeah, look, I can make this. That looks fucking good. All the indie games on Steam. Like, people laugh because, you know, a lot of motherfuckers don't play indie games. But indie games are some of the best games on the market. Some of the best games on the market. And Steam is the only place you can really find them bitches nowadays because everybody want to push big budget AAA games. And them bitches are trash. There's not that many good big budget AAA games out there. But then you'll see a AA game 
like fucking greed fall from spiders and you're like damn that shit's amazing it's fun it's unique too and it, and it fits the genre of game i really want to play and it's not that it's not overblown it's not hella long so it's not just padding for tom and those are the games you seek out those are the games you want to play but what company is promoting those types of games none of them not not the big three anyway not the big three in gaming, not the Nintendos, not the not, not the Microsofts, the Xboxes, not the Sonys and the Playstations. They're not fucking doing that shit. Epic Game Store, they could be. Kind of. But Steam? Steam Next Fest says it all. Every time I see a Steam Next Fest come up, I can't wait for the summer one. There's thousands of game developers getting promoted. And most of them have zero name. They have zero credibility, but they still get the promotion they deserve because they created something that people actually want to play. And you just see hundreds of thousands of people in Steam Next Fest checking out game demos, playing new things, trying new things out. Why don't Xbox do that? Because Microsoft has hundreds of billions of dollars to throw around, trillions of dollars to throw around. Technically, why ain't they doing that? Why is Sony not doing that? They've so hundreds of millions of consoles bro they have plenty of fucking money supposedly sony's actually broke but like they have a big platform they could be promoting a whole lot of game devs they choose not to why because they in it for the money they just want the money from it and it's always it's always just a it always leaves a bad taste that's why i be on steam a lot even though i don't game on pc much because i i kind of hate pc gaming i'm not even going to lie to you Got a great PC right here. Got a lot of games bought on Steam. I really hate PC gaming. Like, <laughs> I really hate PC gaming. It's because I'm not... I don't like the troubleshooting part of finding problems, bro. Because I will be playing a game and my game will randomly crash on Xbox. I know it's a software problem. It's not a hardware problem. You crash on fucking on PC... It could mean anything. The software could be bugging. You could have some drivers that's not updated. You could you your fucking CPU could be getting bottlenecked somewhere. Your RAM could be full of random shit. Like it's 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 a lot of it's a lot of factors that go into it to to actually consistently game on PC. And people have been going through that a lot with Dragon's Dogma too, because Dragon's Dogma runs like shit on PC. I've seen it. I've watched people play Dragon's Dogma on PC. And that motherfucker just crashed for no fucking reason. And they have to go through all these troubleshooting measures to figure it the fuck out. Is it this? Is it that? Is my graphics too high? Is it too low? You don't have to deal with that shit on the console, bro. Yeah, you don't have the same freedom as PC. But you don't got to deal with that shit on the console. So if Phil can get fucking Steam to come to PC and we not have to deal with all that PC bullshit when it comes to running games... I would enjoy the hell out of that. I know a lot of gamers would enjoy the hell out of that. And then Game Pass would still be the thing Xbox pushes on gamers. Because what people fail to realize is they make more money off Game Pass than they do trying to sell you a fucking game. They make way more money off Game Pass than they do trying to sell you a game. Because you might you might catch a mega hit. You might catch a mega hit. And they make a lot of money off of that. Kind of like Helldivers is doing. But Helldivers came in as a, at a clean price. It made sense. But you won't always catch that break. So Game Pass is where they make the money from. And they're going to continue to make the money from there. So yeah, bring Steam over here. If people want to still buy shit, go buy it from Steam. Steam's not going anywhere. Open the platform up. They don't need Epic Game Store if they get Steam. But I mean, Epic does, they do be buying their own like exclusive content. And that's one of those things Phil is trying to break the barrier on. Exclusive content. Trying to get get rid of that. Not because they want to... They want PlayStation to bring their games to Xbox. Not because they want to put their Xbox games on PlayStation. It's because... People want to play the games, bro. And they don't want to have to be... Barred to where they buy the game. Is where they have to play that motherfucker at. And every gamer goes through that. That's why I like that I bought Starfield on Xbox. And I still get the modded on PC. For free. I didn't buy that shit again. I got it for free. So I bought the fuck out of Starfield on PC, but I played through that motherfucker at 30 frames on Xbox and happily enjoyed it. Gamers like choices, bro. Some people act like choices is bad. A lot of choices could be bad. But like, 
sometimes add a little variety in this shit. And that's what console gaming needs. It needs some variety in this shit because Xbox having a store to themselves, like Sony just got sued. People just forget that Sony just got sued in the EU, in the UK, for their storefront, for over overpricing games and shit over there. And they had to pay out how many millions of dollars? Did people just forget that fucking lawsuit? Now let them have had a Steam store on par with, with their with their PlayStation store right next to it. People got to choose where they bought the game from to run on your hardware. That would never have been an issue. Because if Steam is running a sale on a game, Sony is still selling for full price, you buy that motherfucker on Steam. Then it'd be more competitive in their store. Yeah, you said the console market isn't getting bigger, so Phil's trying to make the pop bigger. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because he's trying to find as many new people to bring into gaming as he possibly can. Because there is no more gamers to go around. There's no more gamers to go around. Yeah, sometimes gamers flip from console to console. Maybe they might go to PC. Maybe they have a console and a PC, like a lot of people does. I have a console. I have a PC. There's a Switch in there. I mean... I got I got games on on many platforms, but I mean I use my Xbox primarily, so that is that is where m the most of my time is consistently spent. Even though I do have PC and Steam, I use it occasionally when Steam Next Fest is around when I'm playing something on PC. But I mean, if I can get that motherfucker on Xbox, I'm not playing it on PC. So if I could get my PC on my Xbox, come on now, bro, that's exactly what I want. That don't mean I would want my Nintendo games on Xbox. Like, I like the Switch. I like the Switch for what the Switch offers, bro. So I wouldn't want to play Switch games on Xbox. Because the Switch games aren't built for Xbox, bro. They built for Joy-Cons. And flicking and flipping the motherfucking Joy-Cons around. And that's, that's what's good about Nintendo. It's not like you can't play Zelda on any controller. But uh, the console market is just a just a stagnant pie, bro. It's just a stagnant pie, and everybody got a slice of it. But what if you want more pie? Either you take it from somebody else, or you just go get another pie. And that's where mobile gaming comes in. That's where cloud gaming comes in. They're just trying to make more pies, bro. Because these corporations are greedy as fuck. It's not like they're not. But how do you, how do you be greedy? By seeming less greedy. You said Microsoft is one of the biggest publishers in the world with ABK and Bethesda. You said they want to get money from all platforms. I mean, yeah, Call of Duty is going to get them a lot of money from all platforms, especially if they can get the fans back. Because that's the thing, like Call of Duty has been falling off for a long time. Now that Microsoft kind of bought them at their almost their lowest point, because I mean, nobody's playing Call of Duty right now. I mean, there's still probably a couple million niggas still playing Call of Duty, but it's not the it's not the forefront of shooter gaming no more. Like it was in the past. Like it was when we were growing up. When it was Halo, Call of Duty, and Battlefield battling it out for everybody's time. It's not like that no more. Halo is falling off. Battlefield is falling off. Call of Duty has fallen off. Whether you like it or not. It's still making a whole lot of money. It's still the second highest fucking selling game every year. Sometimes the first highest rated game every year. I mean selling game every year. But it's, but the consistency of, of like... Quality has definitely drastically dropped, especially since like the rebuild in 2019. It has been tanking ever since because they're trying to capture the casual audience that may or may not actually play Call of Duty. And every company is kind of going through the swing of things, trying to capture new gamers, but they're isolating the older ones. You said console plus phone plus PC plus handheld. See the handheld news when I heard that. At first, I didn't believe it, and then I then I went to go read the articles and shit that that Phil was talking, and I'm like, they might really fucking do it, but why? Why would they do it? It like, if Microsoft and Xbox created a handheld console, for one, games would have to be have to be running on their natively. It can't be a little streaming thing like Sony did with the with the with the portal. Because that shit is ass. 
a lot of people that bought a portal return that hoe, even though they still talk about how how the sales are so good. A lot of people that bought a fucking portal put that motherfucker back at the store because they thought it was something that it wasn't. So it definitely can't be that. But it also can't be weak. Because you can easily bring out the rogue ally. You can all instantly bring out the motherfucking Legion. The the Steam Deck. And like those are portable gaming machines. They're big as shit, most of them. But they run games at like 1080p 60. Like people cried about the Series S. So why would a handheld Series S be any better? Because a Series S is exactly what a handheld would be. You said a handheld Series S that docks and travels on the go. See, that, that would be the thing. Like, if it ended up being a Switch Lite, that would be the only way it made sense. But then it would still have to be powerful enough to run all of the next-gen Xbox games. Because remember, people blame the Series S for the Series X not having 60 frames on Starfield. They blame the Series S for not getting Baldur's Gate 3 at launch. Remember, the fans did that. The critics enabled it, but the fans did that. When Diablo 3 runs on the Series S at 60 frames, bro, with seamless co-op in a big-ass mass multiplayer world, for some reason, Larian Studios couldn't get their single-player game with drop-in, drop-out co-op to work, and people blame the fucking Series S? No, that's a developer problem. It wasn't a hardware problem. It was a it was a software developer problem. But you can't tell the fans that. And Microsoft can't just come out and say Larian Studio is a shit developer. They can't make their game run. Like they can't say that, bro. So they have to take the they have to take the abuse online. They gotta let people run with the narrative because they can't really come out and say Larian Studio is a shit developer, bro. Because Blizzard got that shit done easy. You said it would run a solid 720p, 20 FPS. <laughs> That'd be horrible. Like, there's people that, there's people phones that run better than that. Like, I seen somebody playing, like, Final Fantasy, what was it? I think it was 15 on their phone, bro. And I was like, what the fuck? And it looked good. I think it was on an iPhone. That shit looked good. I'm like, how the fuck are you playing this shit on a phone? They were. It was running natively on a phone. And I'm like, that shit's crazy. It looks good. I think it was 13. But it's one of those things. Where like they're like people are gonna people are gonna complain about something. So like if it if it's dockable, it still has to be a 4K machine. Because they can't release a 4K version that doesn't dock. And people and people think that, oh, the, the dockable one is holding us back. Because that narrative is ran this whole time with the Series X and S. So they need to just make one. But if they made one, it has to be powerful. But it also has to be portable. Which is damn near impossible. Unless you want to pay a mountain of money to have one of those. What's good, Cool Breeze? But yeah, you got like, it, like how much is it going to cost? Because it's not going to be a $500 console. And it's going to be dockable, portable, and native. It's not going to go over that easy. And I mean, the Steam Deck is kind of that. But even the Steam Deck had its problems. Use that Dr. TV. With native game. I mean, yeah, they can make a like a Series S version it would be lovely. Because that's what all of the all of the portable consoles right now are Series S level in in performance. But when people hear that, people's like, oh, then what the fuck is wrong with the Series S when the motherfucking Steam Deck is Series S level performance, bro? It is handheld, but it's Series S level performance, but it can it can run every big game. Just like the Series S can. But people think like, oh, the Series S is holding back the Series X. Because it, it doesn't have 4K60. What? People don't know technology, bro. And that's the problem. So they made a Series S dockable one. 
first off, people would be pissed that the Series X doesn't have a version. They did that the same thing with like, oh, the digital Series X doesn't exist. Like, why don't you just make a digital version of the Series X like PlayStation did with the PS5? Come on now. They don't know tech. They don't know tech. You can't really explain it to them. But their complaints are mostly valid from their perspective because they like, why make a weaker one when you could have just made the same one just with no disk drop? So they would be they would use that same argument for why did the Series S get a portable dockable version and the X did it? And that would be kind of a valid question. But then you got to think, how do you put that much power in a portable machine that doesn't get fucking hot or run loud as hell from fans trying to cool it? Like it's a it's a it's a it's a tough it's a tough thing to crack. But I mean, Xbox has some amazing engineers. They could probably get something. I mean, it's not actually real. It's not a thing that they're actually doing, but it's something that Phil talked about in the interview at GDC. Yeah, and that's every that's that's the that's the Legion right now. That's the Rogue Ally right now. That's the Steam Deck right now. It's a handheld that runs the Steam library and it has Game Pass on it. Like there's already like four machines that exist like that already. There's just not Xbox native. But yeah, there's four machines that run that that do that already. And they're good. They're good for what they do. So if Xbox came in and wanted to make their own and it be just, a, just an Xbox handheld, what would the name scheme be? Because people already hate the Xbox Series X and S. They already hate that. You said this is why you need an Xbox native one. I mean, it sounds like a good idea sometimes. Like, when I think about it. You said the Windows 11 UI sucks. See, I don't completely agree with that. Because I've been using Windows 11 uh, a while, but my PC isn't compatible with Windows 11 because I need a new motherboard or some shit, they said. They're like, oh, get a new motherboard and you can get Windows 11. So I just haven't upgraded my motherboard so I don't have Windows 11, but all my other devices have Windows 11 and I kind of like it. It's fast. It's snappy. It's seamless. It's just, I don't like why everything's in the middle. You said you're a truck driver? I mean, yeah, so you'll like portable. You'll like portable a lot because you travel. Like, I'm a stationary person. I don't really do a lot of movement. So that I have my setup, like like my whole setup, I have my setup in here. And this is this is where I come to, to chill after after my long day of work and, and, and gym and, and just doing things. I come in here. I got my things with me. Oh, yeah, I see my new Slender Man up there. My, my new picture at the top. I wish it was bigger. I wish it was bigger so y'all could see it. I need to I need to take it down and show y'all. Because I put it up a while ago. But it's Slender Man coming out the forest. And it's a gravestone with my motherfucking name on it. It's so far, bro. It's so far. It's so far. But yeah, Windows 11, I, I kind of like it. For all the reasons people people don't like it. Because it's kind of simple. They simplified the hell out of Windows with Windows 11. And a lot of people don't like how they stripped out a whole lot of shit. But I mean, I'm not an avid PC user. So everything that they took out, I was fine with. So I wasn't going to be like, oh, I like Windows 11. Windows 11 better than Windows 10. Because no, Windows 10 is flawless, bro. Windows 10 is amazing. Xbox is running Windows 10. My PC runs Windows 10. But my devices that run Windows 11, I like how seamless it is, how fast it is. I don't like how they changed my fucking file codes, though. So when I go from Windows 11 to Windows 10, some of my files don't transfer because they changed them bitches in Windows 11. They run a different file system. It's, it's strange. And you got to, like, convert them back. It's, it's weird as hell, bro. So when I when I don't have, like, my intros and stuff that I used to have, Back when I was doing YouTube like two years ago, I had all those crazy ass intros I built. Most of them us are incompatible with Windows 10 now because Windows 11 destroyed them. 
and uh, it's, it's not my fault. I have like two intros left. That's why I bre- that's why I rarely use an intro now, because um, Windows 11 kind of destroyed my whole catalog of intros. I had like 13 intros too. I had hell of them. I used to drop a different one on every video. That shit, that was a good time, bro. That's when I was editing the fuck out of my videos. But back to the gaming news. I'm done reminiscing. Let's get back to this. Did y'all hear about the fucking Microsoft diversity and inclusion uh, web page that went up? And they were talking about how they don't want people to make female characters that, like Eve from fucking Stellar Blade with exaggerated proportions. And they won't... They want men to be vulnerable and shit on, on camera. And I'm like, Microsoft, what are you saying, bro? Nobody cares about that. Like, imagine imagine all the shit that they have to go through to put that on the website. Microsoft really telling people, don't make bad bitches in your games. Do y'all, did y'all forget what, y'all, what Cortana looked like in Halo 4? Did they just forget that they made that? Remember, Cortana used to be broken as hell. Halo 1 Cortana looked like a fucking ant. And then you get the Halo 4 Cortana. You're like, okay, somebody fucking cooked here, bro. Somebody chefed the fuck out of that character model. And now they're saying like, oh, nah, we don't need to do that no more. What? Microsoft, get the fuck off your high horse, bro. That DNI shit is like getting annoying. It's getting annoying as hell. Because they, they want to ruin people's images of their games for the sake of other people who may or may not even like your game in the first place. But yeah, destroy the image so nobody will feel offended. No, fuck that shit. Make their ass feel offended and make them buy the fucking game to figure out why. Because E from Stellar Blade, she looks amazing. Everybody in that game looks amazing. Why the fuck would they butcher the character models? Because people don't like attractive people. Just go be fucking attractive, bro. Exaggerated female body types. I mean, yeah, that's exactly what they were talking about. But they said Eve from Stellar Blade. Or Laura Croft from Tomb Raider. They literally singled out those women, bro. They literally singled out those women. Like, what are you talking about? Have you... Have you played fucking Killer Instinct? Everybody in that fucking game has exaggerated proportions. What? And th- see, this is why Japanese game developers keep skipping Xbox. This is this is the reason the Japanese developers skip Xbox. Cause to think, they they would literally contribute to the. To the to the uglification of all characters in the name of inclusion. Get the fuck out of here, Microsoft. What the hell? Nobody's gonna buy that shit. And that's gonna be that's gonna be the defining factor. So when they drop a game and everybody's ugly as fuck and nobody buys it, are they gonna blame it? Are they gonna blame the game? The the game in fucking you said, as an honorary member of the ugly community, I support their decision. <laughs> you say, do they need to be exaggerated in the question? I mean, no, because like, Star- like Starfield had just basic proportion in women, and they were fine. But they don't need to be. They don't need to be fucking butchered. They talk about. Like, Laura Croft was the most casual-looking girl in fucking, in like, in-game history, bro. Like, Laura Croft wasn't, like, a fucking runway model. She was average-looking. But they saying, like, oh, you can't make her like Laura Croft. What the fuck? You can't make her look feminine no more. What, they all got to be Abby? They all got to bench press fucking 225? What the hell are they saying? I don't, nobody understands what they trying to say, bro. And that's the problem. We don't understand what they're trying to say. It's trying to they're trying to act like like girls can't be in games no more. And if they do, they can't be attractive. It was like, what? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Why do you think Nero Automata killed fucking uh what is it called? Damn, I forgot what the fuck it was called. Xbox's Dragon Game that never came out. 
Because that's the reason it didn't fucking come out. Because fucking 2B killed it. Goddamn scale bound. I don't know why the hell it took me that long to find that name. It was in my brain somewhere. But yeah, the reason Scalebound didn't come out is because 2B killed the fuck out of it. Just imagine, just imagine if 2B wasn't as built for tough like she was. Just, just imagine if her character model didn't look like that. We would probably have Scalebound. We would probably have a have a random nigga with some headphones on riding on a dragon, making pop culture references. We would have that. But you know why we don't have that? Because 2B. You look up 2B right now. She's every fucking word. Why? It's 2B everywhere, bro. She she wasn't that deep of a character, bro. She barely talked. How the fuck did they sell so much? How did they how did they get how did they get over so well, bro? Think about it, Microsoft. If you think if you think just 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 cutting out attractive women from games is gonna fix anything, you would have scale bound. If you think it didn't fucking matter, you would have scale bound. But we don't have scale bound. But you know what we do have? Fucking 2B in near automata, bro. We do have 2B in near automata. Where she can literally blow her own clothes off. Why? <laughs> Why do we have that? Who knows? But nobody fucking cared when it came out. People's like, I'm about to play that fucking game. I only beat it once. You're supposed to beat it like nine times to get the true ending. I'm not beating that shit nine times, bro. I don't even know how to play through a game nine times. Except if it's called Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Then I played through that shit like 20. But 2B? Come on now, bro. Her story is not that interesting. Her character model was. The world kind of was with the robots and shit. But come on now, bro. We would have scale bound if uh, if attractive women wasn't a problem. Yeah, Blizzard keep <laughs> and we see why Blizzard is dead, bro. And everybody wonders, wait, why the why the fuck did Overwatch just stop being popular? Did you see what they did to all the characters that they created? Did 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 people just not re- realize what they did? And all the all the retrospective like changes that people make like the drag like the mass effect legendary edition where the new bioware people went back and altered all the shit the old bioware team created nobody wanted that not a single person wanted that all the camera angles they removed all the dialogue they tore out because they're like oh this this is too insensitive for for the modern audience we don't they didn't give a fuck about the modern audience when they made it bro You said, remember when Aloy got dragged for not being feminine enough? What do you mean? Because everybody was pissed how Aloy came out for fucking for Forbidden West. Everybody was like, what the fuck happened to Aloy? Because did you see how she looked in, in Horizon Zero Dawn? Why the fuck did they butcher her like that? Everybody showed the... Why, why did they butcher her like that? And then didn't they make her gay on the DLC? Like, it was... It was a whole lot of things. Yeah, you said Tekken sells like 60% just to fans on Jiggle Fix. Facts. What do you think people played Resident Evil for? Bro, people bought Resident Evil for that exact reason. Resident Evil 8? With big vampire woman? And you think people didn't buy that for the big vampire woman? They didn't play that bitch for the story? What the fuck? They they bought that shit because of big bad bitches trying to chase you. <laughs> what the fuck you think? Come on now, bro. People be acting. People act all morally, like morally just. And no, you're not. Everybody have the same visual cues as everybody else. People might find different things attractive, but you still find things attractive. And people want to see that shit in front of them all the time. And some of them motherfuckers want to act like, you know. You said Dane with D- yes, the same with DOA, bro. The first time I played that was four. I played four, bro. And I'm like, this game is amazing. <laughs> Why? Because Jizzle Figures was on point. The Jiggle Physics was on point. 
And that, that was like 360 days. Dead or Alive 4 was 360. I was like 13, bro. I started playing fighting games for sure because of that. I mean, I already played like Naruto and Dragon Age. I mean, not Dragon Age, Dragon Ball Z. I was playing those games when I was young. But I started playing like actual fighting games when Dead or Alive 4 came. Because I'm like, what the fuck? The physics were on point, bro. The same with Mortal Kombat. Come on, now Mortal Kombat, Jade Nim, bro, she pole dance after every victory. I mained Jade for a long time. I mained the fuck out of Jade for a long time because I'm going to beat your ass and then she's going to do that fucking pole dance. She's going to slide down the pole and she's going to pose on your ass. And that was the only thing I wanted to see after every battle. I got good at Mortal Kombat just to see that pose every time at the end of every battle. You better not wage, rage quit because I'm trying to see that shit. I got good at the game because of it. Come on now, bro. Come on now. And they see Microsoft sound like they don't want to make any money. Because that's what it is. They don't want to make any money, bro. Because that's that's an easy money grab. Like, I don't think they understand. Fighting against the system that is that is fed you for so long is only going to make you starve. And yeah, you can get, try to get more diverse and inclusive. But do that shit genuinely. They be trying to force that shit into everything. Like, you can't just force that shit into anything, bro. Because people are going to see that it's forced. You're trying to shoehorn that shit in there. People are going to notice. And people are going to re rebel against it. Why do you think all the Sweet Baby Ink shit was going on? Where they put up the page on Steam that everything Sweet Baby Ink has ever worked on? They put a page up. And Sweet Baby Ink got mad that people legit went out of their way to go find every game they worked on and post it. So people know they're forcing diversity into this fucking game. Do you want to play it or no? Nah? And most people be like, nah, I'll go play something else. I'll go play Persona, bro. They're not trying to force diversity on nobody. They're, they're, trying, they're, they're staying true. Platinum is standing 10, bro. And they're making beautiful games doing it. Lovely games. Amazing games. Why can't other developers do the same? I don't know. The Western media is trash. And they ruin a whole lot of mediums because of it. They want to impress people that's not looking. Yeah. Good writing doesn't need D&I. It doesn't. It never did. Like, just imagine... Just, just imagine, Master Chief, bro. Everybody loved Master Chief. Since Master Chief stepped on a fucking main stage for Xbox, Master Chief has been the front and center of 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 humanity everywhere. That's he he's been, he's been that nigga the long the whole time. Didn't nobody know Master Chief was a white nigga until he took off the mask, in in four, bro. At the end of Halo Four, nobody knew that he was white. Nobody cared if he was white. Because Master Chief is him, nigga. He's him. That's all that mattered. The writing for Master Chief made him him. It didn't matter who the fuck was under that mask. Who the fuck was in the super suit. It didn't fucking matter. You say, oh, yeah. You talking when he took on Nick Fury? Yeah. It never, it never mattered, bro. Nobody cared what, what color Kratos was. That nigga was fucking gray. Remember, this nigga Kratos is gray as shit. His skin is gray. That nigga's story is what people liked. That nigga's story is what people liked. That nigga's writing is what people what drew them to him. His rage, bro, the Spartan rage that he had was valid. Niggas resonated with that. Now you want to diversify the fucking, the, the universe? For what? What do you need to diversify this universe for? Just give Kratos his goddamn daggers and let him do work. That's all we want. That's all we ever wanted. I don't know why people want to be diverse, bro. They want to, they want to make things for voices that's not even fucking speaking. And it's not, it's not the fact that they don't deserve a voice. That's not what I'm saying. It's just like they don't fucking care about it. If they did, 
they would have did something. But now gaming companies are trying to do it for them. It's like, we don't fucking need it. We don't want it. But, oh, they're going to force it in. And hopefully it's fucking good. Because if it's trash, they're going to hear about it. And then they're going to blame the fucking gaming community for it. And it's like, no. Because the same thing happened with Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2? Everybody was cooking the fuck out of Insomniac for Spider-Man 2. Yeah, it's not like we don't like diversity. Like, it'd be great. Like, Dragon's Dogma, you're the fucking captain of the guard that's been helping you the whole fucking game. One of the cleanest black characters to release in a game I've seen in a long time. That nigga cut clean as fuck. That nigga armor, standing 10. He a real ass nigga, bro. I like him. I like him. He's a great character. And it's not forced. He's just there. Like, he clean as hell, bro. And I'm like, this is what we want. But then they fuck up Miles Morales, one of the most iconic black characters in Marvel. How you fuck up Miles, bro? You fuck this nigga hair up. Get his nigga a shitty ass suit where his goddamn weird ass cut is hanging out. What are y'all doing over there? That shit that we don't want. We want Miles Morales like he's always been. Like he was written to be. Now they want to they wanna extra diversify this nigga. No, we don't want that. We just want Miles to be Miles, bro. He just could be a white kid in that fucking suit. We don't care. Just make him act like he's supposed to. But no, they got they got motherfucking crimson chin ass Mary Jane over here one tapping niggas. Like they you ruined your own game with this shit. And the developers know what they're doing. And they enjoy it too. Cause yeah, people gonna buy our game anyway. Because yeah, we gonna make them. We gonna make them like this shit. I mean, like, just stop buying the game. That's what I do. I just not buy that shit. That's why I not buy shit. I've not buy a lot of shit. Because there's games that I play and I know it's trash. And I'm like, yeah, bro, I'm going to just step out. I'm not going to put myself through this torment. But yeah, the, the diversity pushes that they be trying to make is so, it's just so uncalled for, bro. Because it's like, what are you really trying to do? What are they really trying to do? What, what point are they trying to prove? The same thing with the movie thing. Like when they, when, when they just start diversifying movies. For what reason, bro? We don't need it. Nobody need it. Who's asking? You said in the comic book, Mary Jane was supposed to be a model. She looked terrible. Yeah, she looked horrible. And the, and the crazy thing is, is that her face model looks nothing like who, who, who they put in the game. That was the worst part about it. We would we would understand that they chose like some random ass girl off the street. She got a big ass bottom face. They're like, okay, you're gonna be Mary Jane. And they slap her ass in the game. Okay, you chose an ugly bitch for a game. But no, they chose an actual model to model Mary Jane and then butchered her in the game. Like, why make her work this hard for mocap and all these scans and shit just to butcher her face? And now she has to go around and say, yeah, I'm a face model for Mary Jane in Spider-Man 2. But then you see the face model and you look nothing like her. Y'all don't look the same at all. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing over there? Like, come on now. Yeah, they want every bitch to be Abby from a, from a fucking Last of Us Part 2. That's fine. That's fine. But don't expect niggas to buy that shit. They're going to be buying Stellar Blade every time. Combat could be just all right. Combat could be boring as hell. People still going to buy Stellar Blade. All because of what? Because the game looks good. It looks good visually. It probably feels great on a controller. There, There's costumes to choose. Just swap in and out outfits. That nigga's going to be doing it all day. They're going to push this game to the forefront. Just to make a fucking, just to make a point. And I agree. I would buy it too if I had a PlayStation. But I don't. I got an Xbox. So when we playing Dragon's Dogma, we're some of the highest, bro. <laughs> Capcom know what they doing in Dragon's Dogma, bro. Because some of the some of the most quality clothes in Dragon's Dogma, the ones that are highest rated for armor, be having the most revealing shit on. Should be revealing as fuck, and it's like. This is the highest rated armor in the game and is revealing as hell. And you like, God damn it, Dragon's Dogma. 
you got to wear it because you don't want to get beat up. You got to be you got to have your you got to have your armor on. Your armor rating has to be high and you got to you got to wear the ashless chaps. No, yeah, we have ashless chaps. Those are the highest rated pants you can find. And I'm like, OK, just a bikini with stockings, the highest rated clothes you can find. And I'm like, dog, bro, what are you doing? But I mean, it's a part of the game. And it don't matter who's wearing it. It's not gender specific. They used to have that in Dragon's Dogma 1, actually. They had gender specific clothes. But they don't do that no more. So now everybody's walking around with ashless chaps and fucking bikinis on and shit because it's the highest rated armor in the game. And they did it on purpose. Capcom definitely did it on purpose. And I'm not even mad at them. Because like, okay, put it in the game. Diversity. Let people deal with it. But oh yeah, let's get to let's get to the PlayStation side, bro. Let's get to the PlayStation side of this. Because Xbox, they has been just getting ran over by nonsense, bro. On the PlayStation side, Stella Blade, like we saying, is coming out. The demo came out. And it looks pretty fucking good. I watched a couple YouTubers like play the demo or some of the demo, like a less low piece. Cause you know, like show the intro. And I'm like, okay, the game looks exactly how I thought it would. It's a third person action game. They got some low cut ass camera angles. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Neuro Automata, but with like Wulong Dynasty's kind of combat. So it, it like, it looks kind of interesting to play. I thought it would have been like lower, like lower budget than how it actually is. But I think Sony kind of invested some more into the game than it actually was. Cause Project Eve didn't look like that. Not at first. They did a whole lot with the Sony partnership. They definitely like promoted more of Stellar Blade. It looks it looks way better than I thought it would. Like visually anyway. The demo had combat looking pretty normal. Pretty normal for like hack and slash combat. I wasn't expecting anything too over dramatic, too drastic, but they got like big ass bosses to fight and shit like that. It looks it looks good. It looks playable. It doesn't look scuffed. Uh, the character model looks great, of course. We all know that. That was, like, a big selling point for the game. But other than that, like, Solo Blade Line is going to be a good game. You say only 12 people are buying that game for the story. I still don't know the story, bro. I just know a bunch of models were fighting, like, distorted monster creatures. Like, a bunch of runway models in high heels and swords. We're flipping and dashing around fighting monsters, bro. That's all I know. You said, the, oh, yeah, I remember that. The statistics. Oh, that shit was crazy. The amount of people that, that goes to board her for fucking PlayStation consoles is outrageous. That statistic was wild, bro. They be on her more than they be on the game and APS5, bro. That shit was crazy. The statistics are wild. But yeah, Stella Blade like is gonna be at least an alright time. It's not gonna be as convoluted as Neuro Automata, but like You said Mr. Astro Train and Bayonetta. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Because yeah, it's, it's like a hack and slash third person action game. So it, it kinda it kinda flows and mixed like that. I don't know if her drone attacks though. I never seen it actually do any damage. But she has a little drone with her, kind of like 2B does. But I didn't see it fire at anything. Maybe because I didn't watch much of the game. I have to see when it actually comes out. If they, like, give that an option. Because, yeah, she got a little drone. You said that gameplay sold you? Yeah, the gameplay looks pretty good. The cutscenes are pretty well rendered. They have English voice acting, which I was not expecting that shit. Because most Korean games and Japanese games don't dub their games in English. But I guess Sony kind of like, you know, invested enough for them to get an English cast and to dub the whole game. Her voice is kind of strange because I think she has like a like an Australian voice, like an accent in her game as Eve. Like she I don't know. I don't know what I expected her to sound like, but I think she's Australian in her English voice. And it's kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know. I have to look again. It's kind of strange from when I heard it, like when I heard her speak. Because I thought I just heard her speaking Korean. 
Because I thought it was just going to be a Korean game. Kind of how I played uh, Bloody Spell. Bloody Spell is a Chinese game, and they all speak in Chinese. Like, even all the, all the like, the menus and stuff are still in Chinese. Sometimes. They, they kind of dubbed it in English for some of it. So, you could, like, find the menus that you actually need to use. But most of it is still in Chinese. Even the subtitles are still in Chinese sometimes. But the game is pretty good. But, yeah. Stella Blade like is gonna be it's gonna be a good time. Hopefully, for the people that actually get the game and buy the game. Hopefully, you know, they get the reviews they deserve. Cause I know I have a feeling a whole lot of critics are gonna shit on this game because they didn't DNI the fuck out of this game. Because they didn't they didn't go inclusive as hell they're like oh character models oh that character model like that nigga from uh from digital foundry but like the character model is so distracting like yes nigga that's the point that's the point <laughs> that's how you gain focus nigga if you're easily distracted then somebody need to teach you focus and that game is made to teach you focus because while you're trying to stir some assets you should be learning to block and dodge and you need to learn real quick. Play some play some Dark Souls, bro. Play some Bloodborne. Play some Elden Ring. So you'll learn how to not be fucking distracted in a game by a character model. But, you know, you can't really make that shit up. In other news, on the PlayStation side of shit, Ben Studios. We ain't heard that name in a long time. But news has came out that Big Ben Studios is actually working on another game, bro. They're not stuck in limbo no more. Being a support studio, they're making another game. And it turns out to be a live service game. And I'm like, Sony, you just you just canceled two live service games. Three live service games. You said some people are a little too geeked up shorty figure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is because like for the past how many years? How many skin tight suits were in gaming for the past like three or four years? Probably none. Probably none. And then they saw her as walk out in like a fucking skin tight bodysuit and a sword with a ponytail. They was like, that's the one. <laughs> I mean, most of them don't. And that's that's who they make their money off. Remember, the studio that's making this game makes gotcha games, bro. They make anime gacha games. So they know what niggas like. They make the games that people spend thousands of dollars on packs for. They have the big brain. This company is not stupid. Unlike Microsoft and Sony, who don't care about that shit, the gacha game community knows what people want. They know what sells. I mean, yeah, Bayonetta, and guess who Guess who makes Bayonetta, bro? The same people that made 2B. See, you're kind of getting it, Cool Breeze. The same people that made 2B made Bayonetta. Everybody else is too scared to do that. Because for some reason, bad bitches on screen equals a no-no. Why is that a thing now? Because it offends people. What? It doesn't make sense. It used to be a thing for a long time. But now people are like, oh, nah, you got you to gotta attract the women on your screen. Oh, no. Bitch, who the fuck do you want to play as? Some people, I don't know. They just don't understand. But yeah, Bayonetta was a fire character. She had great writing. Had a very diverse cast. Nobody was upset about that. But nowadays, if they make Bayonetta, people are going to be like, why? <laughs> why does she look so good? Why is her hair her clothes? People would be upset, confused. But they don't understand what magic is, bro. They don't care. They just want to destroy everybody's favorite franchise. And that's where we have to draw the line. No, you're not destroying our favorite franchises. We want them bitches to be good. But yeah, Ben Studios. 
Hold on, we got a sidetrack. They're making a fucking live service game. Yeah, we got to get back into this, Mo. Um, Sony just destroyed how many live service games? The Spider-Man live service game? The Last of Us live service game? The fucking Deviation live service game? How many other live service games did they just throw away? And now Ben Studios is making a live service game. What the fuck is Sony doing, bro? Ben Studios made single-player story games, third-person action games. Why are they working on a live service game now? I don't know. Ben Studios can't catch a motherfucking break, just like Mo said. They can't catch a break, bro. Because Ben Studios hasn't been able to make a game since days gone. They've been forced to be a lapdog for Naughty Dog to make fucking remakes and remasters of games that they already remade and remastered. You said if you if you look up the actresses and models for your new favorite game, she's pretty diverse in mixed race. I mean, it's kind of good. But Ben Studios cooked. I don't know what the fuck they're working on yet. I don't think anybody knows what they're working on yet, but hopefully they get to release something and it actually be good. Because Sony been bullying the fuck out of Ben Studios for a while, bro. For a while. It's kind of it's kind of sad how Ben Studios is being treated. Because they, I know they have at least enough to make a fucking Days Gone 2. I know they've at least made enough to make Days Gone 2. And Sony's like, nah. You said Fable? See, we haven't seen much of Fable. I want to see more of Fable. Because what they showed looked pretty good. But everybody talked about how scuffed the character model was. And I mean, to each his own with that. In, in Fable, you kind of create your own character. So it doesn't really matter. What the original character model looks. It's not going to be like Joanna from uh, Perfect Dark. Because everybody plays Joanna. Joanna is a set character. So they can't fuck her up. If they do, the whole game is getting thrown away, bro. Nobody's going to play that shit if Joanna scuffed. They know that. So they better keep that motherfucker in the shadows until the DNA shit is done. Because uh, if they fuck up Joanna, they're cooked. But in Fable, you get to create your own character. So it's like... It's not going to be too... It's not gonna be too uh too messed up if you if you don't get to uh if you don't get to get to make them up. Because yeah, the, the girl that they showed in the in the trailer, that could be anybody. Because you could change who you are. Well, you used to. If they don't have that in a new one, a lot of people are gonna be upset. But you know. Heroes. I do want to see more of Fable though. Cause this it's been a while. Well, I guess it's been like a year or so, hasn't it? Since Fable. But I mean the summer showcase is coming up in like two months. So it's not that far away for us to see it. You know what I get the fuck you see and I'm hyped as fuck about? Dragon Age is finally gonna show themselves in June. Bioware is finally going to show Dragon Age in June after fucking like 10 years since the last Dragon Age. We finally get to see the next one. And I just I just hope it's at least Dragon Age, bro. Because if they fuck up the Dragon Age formula like I've been hearing for like a year, I'm going to be upset. Am I still going to play the game? Probably. I played Mass Effect Andromeda. I might as well play the next Dragon Age. If they're trying to change things up, I need to at least experience what they change and then make my verdict if I like it or not. But Dragon Age is coming this year. EA, you better not ruin it, man. <laughs> they better fucking not ruin it. Because Dragon Age Inquisition was a game of the year winner, bro. You said Days Gone sold 9 million copies and still got canceled. That is a crazy thing to know. That is a crazy... Because remember, Ghost of Tsushima sold... What did it sell? It sold 4 million two times? Didn't it sell 4 million two times? 
because they sold it twice and i think it sold four million and then no i think it sold eight million in total so i think it did sell four million two times and to to get to like eight million in sales that's like that's what they said for sucker punch when they released their collector not the collector the the uh director's cut of the game and i'm like you really have to sell your game two times to get fucking set like seven or eight million in in total sales they sold that bitch twice so th the thing days gone sold nine million they only sold it once they didn't remaster it i know they did release it on pc but like they only sold the game one time and it sold nine million that's a successful fucking game i mean it's not spider-man successful it's not god of war successful but it's still a successful game Nine million people bought that hoe. Nine million people bought that hoe. And I know that budget wasn't that fucking big, bro. You can't tell me that budget was big. The game was bland as hell. The tech might have been kind of like pricey for like the hordes. But come on now. I know nine million would have been enough for them to at least secure a sequel. And Ben Studios got hold. And they start making remasters for fucking Naughty Dog. That's, that is sad. But now they're back. With another fucking death ticket, bro. Make a live service game for PlayStation when all the other bigger studios failed. Naughty Dog failed. Insomniac failed. And we all know what fucking Gorilla used to do. They failed. They used to make shooters. And now they make Horizon. So, uh... We all know none of them can make a live service game. Bungie used to. But now what the fuck are they doing? I think Marathon is probably getting canceled. Fucking Destiny is in a toilet. We don't know what the hell is going on over there at Bungie, bro. So nobody's making a good live service game over there at PlayStation. And now all of a sudden, Ben Studios is tasked with making a live service game. And we don't even know about what. Like, that's the thing. Like, if we understood, I think it's going to be a shooter. But we don't know, not for sure what the what the next thing is gonna be. There's still fucking Starfield articles. This is 22 hours ago. They're still making fucking Starfield articles, and people say that it was a game of the generation. Fucking childish, bro. People are still talking about Starfield. That shit came out almost a year ago now. I can't wait for the DLC. Starfield's a fucking a mega hit, bro. A lot of people talk shit about Starfield. That shit was a mega hit. And people gonna people won't come around to it like they did with Skyrim after like a year or so. Everybody's gonna be playing Starfield. Crazy Kid's gonna come out. He's gonna revolutionize gaming again. It's gonna be a good time. And Gearbox, bro. Did y'all hear the Gearbox news? You say you think live service games are over? I don't think they're over. I just think people need to stop trying them. Like, if you haven't got a successful live service game yet, and you've made multiple, you just got to stop. You just got to stop. Because you're wasting money. Like, Square Enix kept trying to make live service games. They kept trying to make live service games. They have one good one. That's Final Fantasy. I don't know which one, like 14 or some shit. They have the live service one. It works. They're doing good. Stop trying to make more of them. They try to make Outriders. They try to make fucking the bubble blasting one for PlayStation. They they keep trying to make live service games. No, it's, you're, you're not doing it. Yeah, Final Fantasy 14. The same thing with PlayStation. PlayStation has failed to get a live service game off the fucking ground. They keep trying. They keep failing. How much money are they going to waste on this pipe dream of getting a live service game? They just got one, which is Helldivers, but Sony doesn't completely own Helldivers. You say a road trip game, Open Roads? Wait, have I played that? No, I played Road 90, 99.
Well, I think I might have played this. I think I have played this. I don't think I played all of it. I think I played this, though. Did I play it for YouTube? Maybe? Because, yeah, because that's what they got they deal with Microsoft. They start bringing all the games to Game Pass. But, yeah, Sony just got Helldivers. Helldivers is popping up for them. But they want to keep trying to make more live service games. Like, you have one. Make sure that motherfucker can make you some money. And then go do something else. Microsoft kept trying. They got one. Sea of Thieves. I mean, I guess they got Call of Duty now. But like Halo shouldn't have been a live service game. They tried. It didn't work. You say you play a game like As Dust Falls. As Dust Falls was such a good game, bro. It was such a good game. It was so it was so uniquely like painted. Like crafted the 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 art direction that game was phenomenal, bro. But a lot of people won't give it a chance because it looks the way it does. And it's like stop motion kind of. Like a comic book. But it, it is a good game. The story, the writing in that game is actually phenomenal. But the the web, the story web is kind of crazy. Because there's so much shit you could possibly get into that I don't think I would ever experience getting into. And it shows you how many webs you could have went through. When you're playing the game. And I'm like holy fuck bro. I would have never gotten. Off, like I would have never gotten caught up in the web shit. Because I'm usually a concrete. Like this is my decision. Type of type of person. So I never try to go through. Like the what if saga. But in you know, a dust falls. I'll always be like damn. What if I decided to do something else. I just want to see what happens. And it's kind of what like how you slide into. Games with that many decisions in it, you kind of want to like backtrack real quick. Like, oh, okay, what if I make this decision? What happens? And then you go down a whole different track, a completely different story. A Dust Falls did a great job with that. They did a great job with that. But yeah, everybody trying to make live service games is destroying their it's destroying their franchises. Because I remember when Mass Effect had a pretty good fucking multiplayer. In Mass Effect 3, multiplayer was phenomenal. Little round-based horse shooter. All your friends, you get together, bro. You go platinum, just body and shit. Enjoying yourself, having a good old time, leveling up. And then they ruined it. They tried to remake it in Andromeda, and it wasn't even fucking good. They tried to do the same thing in Dragon Age, and it wasn't fucking good. And it's like, how did y'all lose it, bro? Like... Y'all had the formula. Y'all could have just copied your own work. Plagiarized the fuck out of it. And the fans would have enjoyed it. But game developers be trying to do some other shit. Or they get told to do some other shit from the higher ups. And it never works out. It never pans out the way they want it to. They wanted to pop packs. And randomly get fucking soldiers. And I'm like, no. We're not going for it. So hopefully they can stop. Because, I mean, if Call of Duty is going to be successful, they need to stop trying to do anything else. You said you forgot it was multiplayer? You forgot what was multiplayer? Mass Effect? Or Dragon Age? They both had multiplayer in it. But, like, they was, like, sideshows. Which, it should be like that. Every one of the games of old that had multiplayer were sideshows. Multiplayer wasn't that big of a deal until micros start getting big. Once microtransactions started to get real big, multiplayer games kind of took over gaming. Because they're like, okay, keep people together, keep people playing, and keep people paying for more shit. And that's how, kind of how it got to where it is. You said Mass Effect, yeah. Mass Effect three, I bro, I used to I used to make videos back in the day on 
that shitty little that shitty little laptop is in that blue box under the the sky thing. I have videos on that fucking laptop of me playing Mass Effect like multiplayer and just talking random shit about games. Just talking random shit about games. That that is back when I first started thinking of becoming a YouTuber. I used to make videos on that shitty little laptop in that box. It might still be on that on that fucking laptop. I haven't opened it in a long time. It's probably dead. I probably have to recharge it and try to like get some of the data off of it. But I know for sure I have videos on that laptop. I have videos on that laptop. And that, that I'm talking about that's from like 2016. That is a real long time ago. I don't think I was even making videos at that time. But yeah, the multiplayer in Mass Effect 3 was hella good. The Mass Effect Andromeda one, not so much. And I don't know if anybody can actually pinpoint why it didn't feel as good. I think it's because the power system might have changed. Maybe the, the cover system might have changed. There was a lot of things that happened that made it not fun. The Dragon Age one was just like a, like a word imitation of the Mass Effect one. And it just didn't work. It just it just didn't fucking work. But they did add sprint in multiplayer, but that you couldn't sprint in single player. And a lot of people were upset about that. They like, why the fuck can't I sprint in single player, but I can sprint in multiplayer? They fucked up. They fucked up. But yeah, those games did have they were good features, but yeah, they were side shows. They're just features. Now all of a sudden, multiplayer is at the forefront. Microtransactions are everywhere. People land, oh, single player games are dead because you can't re-monetize them. And it's like, it's your fault. Because even Call of Duty, I used to buy Call of Duty for the campaign, bro. I used to buy Call of Duty for the campaign. And then I play multiplayer or I play zombies because it was a part of the game. Now there's literally, you literally buy Call of Duty just to play multiplayer. And to complete a battle pass. You said, yeah. In games where it focuses on story and single player. Yeah, a lot of games should be like that. But then, like, Halo took a turn for the worse. Because since multiplayer started getting so big, Halo kind of took a, a fucking single player campaign backseat and started pushing multiplayer forward. And that's not what Halo fans want. Even though Halo YouTubers will tell you right now, like, oh, Halo multiplayer this, Halo multiplayer that. 90% of niggas that played Halo, from Halo 1 to now, played Halo to see Master Chief's story. And then they got into multiplayer. And start playing Griff Ball or some shit. Like, nobody was in there trying to be a competitive fucking Halo player. And going around playing Halo multiplayer all day. Nobody was. Everybody went Master Chief DLC for Halo Infinite. Because Halo Infinite had a great fucking story. Had a great little open world on a Halo ring. It was good. Where the, why is it not more of that? You said Gears of War and Halo rose the bar too high? Yeah, because people played Gears of War for the story. And then multiplayer was always a sideshow. And Gears of War still holds up though. So if you go play Gears of War 5, like Gears 5... The story is still phenomenal. It's amazing. Kate as the star now. Everything's good. And it feels good to like flow the way that it did. Where it went from JD to Kate. From 4 to 5. And it worked. It didn't feel forced that Kate is now the star. Because it kind of felt like she was written in to be the main face of Gears now. It works. People love that shit. And then you can go play fucking multiplayer and have a good old time. But multiplayer isn't the focus for fucking... For the coalition, it's still the great ass fucking campaign story that they write the fuck up and animate the hell out of in Unreal Engine for all of us to enjoy. That's what we want from our game still. But for some reason, this multiplayer push and this live service push is killing a whole lot of games. It's killing a whole lot of games. I enjoyed Halo Infinite Story so much, I played that shit on the hardest difficulty. I played that shit on the hardest difficulty. And they I don't even think they gave me my trophy, bro. I mean, my, my achievement. I think the game broke and it didn't give me my achievement. But I played that shit on the hardest difficulty. I suffered through the end of that game. 
Yeah, everybody that's everybody that played Halo Infinite story wish they had more of it. Because that shit was good. Weapon was pretty fun. Learning that she was a part of Cortana. Spoiler alert if you didn't play the game. But yeah, learning that Cortana created the fucking weapon for Master Chief because she was leaving him. So she made another version of her <laughs> to be with Chief because she wasn't going to beat her. Come on now, bro. You couldn't have wrote that shit more beautiful. And then they didn't write more of it. They start making fucking multiplayer seasons. Get the fuck out of here, bro. 343. Get to work making more Halo story. Because that's what people are here for, bro. People are not here for season 7 of Halo. No. Niggas want to see the flood come back and take over a planet and have Halo, Master Chief, Nim, Solo Squad in the flood. That's what we want to see, nigga. I don't know what the hell they've been doing because we want to see the flood. After fighting the flood in Halo 3, that's all I've been wanting to see from Halo ever fucking since. The Halo 3 flood taking over a planet again, Chief having a Solo Squad the hell. Get the flood out of here, bro. Shoot the halo ring. Erase them from existence. That's what we want to see. Or some more emotional shit like they had in Halo 4. Halo 4 story is still probably unmatched when it comes to Halo. Like cinematic Halo. Halo 4 story is so... It's like god damn bro. Why is it like this? And then they kind of like ignore the fuck out of that story. In Halo 5. And then in Halo Infinite. The story is kind of like, okay, all that crazy emotional shit that happened, we could backtrack on that. No. Nigga, we need Halo 4 too. That's what we need. Halo 4 Part 2 is what the what the fans need, bro. Because that story is is what we're all waiting on, bro. When Chief got he was depressed, nigga. After Cortana let like threw him out the ship and left. And he went to go take his fucking armor off, nigga. Come on now. Come on now. That's the fucking story I want more of. And I mean, Halo Infinite kind of is like that. You know, his redemption arc, he gets beat up. You know, thrown off the ship. He has to wake up on, on the on the Halo ring. Cooked up. You said with this new policy, maybe Cortana would be swapped out. I mean, she was already swapped out. Why do you think Weapon had a full, like, pants and a shirt on? Remember, Cortana was just was just a hologram with a hologram bodysuit on, bro. She didn't wear clothes. Now the weapon has clothes on. She has a shirt and pants on and shoes. Cortana didn't wear shoes. She was barefoot. She was barefoot in a bodysuit she created. Like <laughs> they already swapped her out. They already they already fucking inclusified the fuck out of Cortana. Would they do it even more? Hopefully not, because, I mean, they would just keep ruining the Cortana model. They need to bring old Cortana model back. You said, did I ever listen to the Halo podcast? I didn't even know that existed. Who made the Halo podcast? Is it official, or is it just like some fans of Halo? Should I look it up? We're going to podcast evolve the home of Halo. What could the latest new deep dogs on the cannon? Wait, is this official? It came out with promotions for Halo Guardians. Oh, if it came out for fucking Halo 5 Guardians, everybody ignored it. Because that's when they tried to push that Spartan lock shit on us. Which they did that all wrong. See, I understand the civil war with Halo. I mean, with with Chief and the old uh, Spartans versus the new ones, the Spartan Lock and all that. But they pushed. They they did that se that segregation shit far too. They pushed that shit far too far. Because they literally had whole campaigns of Spartan Lock, legit talking mad shit about Chief and Cortana, bro. Disrespecting my nigga's name. You say it's a story with Michael Keith and Keen Peele. 
But yeah, like Spartan Log, Spartan Log, bro. He they made him unlikable to to such a degree that when the game came out, people already hated this nigga. People already hated this nigga when the game came out. And then on the when you when you play the game, because I play Halo Five Guardians, a lot of people didn't. When Chief beats the dog shit out of Spartan Lock, and you're the one playing Spartan Lock, you're cheering for fucking Chief. That is how bad Spartan Lock was as a character, bro. You say it's called Halo Podcast Hunt the Truth. I think I have listened to that. Because that's when they were that's when like they were talking about chasing Chief down and shit. Halo Wiki. Damn, this motherfucker is at, at the top 1% of iTunes podcasts of all time. It was the best podcast of 2015, bro. Holy shit. I didn't know it went off like that, bro. It had 13 episodes. What the fuck? I might have to go watch these. High key. You said it might have been cool if they made Master Chief a boss battle. He was a boss battle. And like, I think it was like halfway through uh, Spartan Lock's story. And then, I mean, no, I guess you get your ass beaten a cutscene, really. You don't really get to fight Chief. Because there's no way you can you can write in that Spartan Locks team gets to fight Chief. Hell no, nah, bro. Silver team would smack the fuck out of Spartan Locks team, bro. And that's why they had it set up like that. And I don't know why they had it set up in the promotions like they were on equal footing. Like Silver team is gonna shit on them, bro. It's no competition. It's no competition. But they kind of made it seem like that. Then, then like Spartan Lock and Chief stand ten against each other, and Chief looks like a god compared to him. And I'm like, God damn, Chief's gonna kill this nigga. And all Chief was doing is trying to find Cortana, bro. He was trying to, he was trying to find the 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 person that's been with him since he was fucking born. People don't remember this nigga. Chief has had Cortana his whole life. His whole life has been in that suit with Cortana in his head. So when he lost her, he was he was not himself no more. He lost a part of him. You say back and forth fighting the team of Spartans as a solo chief. And then fighting the team of Spartans. And then play as the Spartans hunting chief. I mean, that's kind of that was essentially how they built Halo 5. It wasn't that cut and dry because you still did like basic Halo missions where you went through, you fought the Covenant and all that shit. You fought the, 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 what the fuck was the robots called again? The Forerunners? You fought them, everybody looking for Cortana. You're trying to stop Chief. You're like following in his footsteps. You only catch up with him, I think, like once. And then it flips, it flips back and forth. Yeah, they, they lost the plot for sure because. After you chase down Chief, I think you get your ass beat the first time. Then you play as Chief and you go back in time to when you and Silver Team first leave to go search for Cortana against orders. So the story, like Halo 5, the, the pacing of the game was hella off because you would be like halfway through the game and then it send you back in time to play through the game again as Master Chief. And Silver Team before you get to that same point again. And then it flips back to Locke searching for Chief. And yeah, the game kind of got convoluted. But it could have been, it could have been a masterpiece of a game if they didn't have Spartan Locke be so fucking arrogant, bro. They really wanted to push this nigga. 
as the face of the franchise. Like, come on now, Chief is done. It's all about Locke. Come on now, bro. You can't say that about an icon. You can't say that about an icon. That's like them. That's like Bioware legit trying to bring up another random motherfucker to fight Commander Shepard for the control of the Normandy. Fuck out of here, bro. This is Commander Shepard you're talking about. They yeah, I mean they they tried it because they wanted to go a different direction from Chief. Every game tries to do it, try to get a new character to try to like take off to be like, okay, this is the one we kind of want to, you know, gradually push onto you. And they do it all wrong because they make you the enemy of the person that you like the most. If you've been playing Halo a long time and then you get to Halo 5 Guardians and all of a sudden you're playing a nigga that don't like Chief, you're not going to like him because you've been with Chief your whole goddamn life. The same thing with The Last of Us and them fucking making you play Abby, bro. Like, who the fuck thought that was a good idea? Yeah, that was it was so dumb. They literally pushed that shit, and they're like, okay, this is going to work, and it didn't. And then they wonder why it didn't. Like, why didn't they see what we wanted to get from this? They know what you wanted to get from it, but as a fan, nobody's going to fucking like it. Nobody's going to like that you have to play as a girl that your favorite character risked his life to save. Risk his life to get to safety. And then she beats this nigga with a golf club after shooting his knees out. What? Then you play as this bitch for hours. You got to go learn her whole backstory. You got to learn all her relationships with her friends, her family. And you just got to sit through this shit. And the whole time you're wishing she dies. Because she just killed your favorite character. Come on now, bro. That's not an enjoyable experience for anybody. So they always try that shit. They always try to like add that in. And that's what I was saying about Gears 5 from Gears 4. It felt so organic to play as fucking Kate and not JD. Yeah. Because Naughty Dog animated the fuck out that game. The game run it plays and flows so well from like the shooting animations, the death animations, the killing animations, the assassinations, the the sound design, the fucking the the fucking clicker design, the AI design. Like they did a good fucking job crafting the game. But then the story was just hot garbage. And they're like, yeah, bro, this is this is what we slapped on top of our perfect crafted masterpiece. Okay, well, you're a fucking idiot for doing that, but it's Neil Druckmann, bro. They put him in charge and he fucked the whole thing up. But yeah, that's why I was saying, like, the transition from JD to Kate from four to five, it didn't feel like they were forcing a new character on you. It felt organically written that JD was there. You play as Kate because Kate became like a pivotal part of the story. With her whole family, she got the little covenant necklace. You knew something was up. And then you start playing as Kate in the fifth game. And her voice actor is great. The writing is amazing. The shit that she's going through. Then JD ass, he gets fucking injured. Now they got this little feud going on. But it's not, it's no like, it's no like bad blood in there. It's just legit like a transitional game. Now Kate is the front of the game. And then, bro, me losing JD. Fuck, nigga. Damn, that shit hurt, bro. That shit hurt. And I didn't know that was going to be in the game. I didn't know that was going to be in the game. But Gears 5, masterpiece. Fucking masterpiece of a game. I played that shit with Dolby Vision, with Dolby Atmos in my headphones, and I'm like, shit, bro. I can't wait for Gears 6. That is one of those game stories. I'm like, come on now. You say you like the darkness and horror elements in Gears 1, 2, and 3. They had a little bit of that in 5. It wasn't a lot of it. But yeah, those moments in like Gears 1 and 2 where like you fight like the blind thing that one taps you if it runs at you like the Berserker or when you like going through those things and you like trying to fucking shoot at the crawlers and shit that's trying to get you through the walls. Like those missions were far. I still haven't played through all of Gears 3. I'm supposed to do that for live stream. You could probably start doing that when when uh when vacation starts. When I go on vacation. 
I'm gonna probably run through Gears 3 on live stream. Because I supposed to did that a long time ago and I completely keep forgetting. I keep adding all these new games to the list. You say you wish more Xbox games supported Adobe Vision? I just think uh, most of the developers, like most of the studios don't have the funding to get Adobe Vision. I think that's what it is because Gears have Adobe Atmos and Adobe Vision because I think that's like written in the contract. Because they like advertise that on Adobe's like actual storefront. They advertise that Gears is going to be on there. Yeah, Adobe Vision looks amazing. It looks amazing. And it and it's not like overly bright. It's overly saturated. HDR 10, it looks good. But when it's bright, it's fucking bright, bro. I turn this shit off all the time. I stay turning off fucking uh, HDR. That's why most games, if y'all see me go to settings, I make sure HDR is off. And I make sure the brightness is all the way down because I, I just hate how bright some of these games get. And they do that to show off like light reflections and ray tracing. I don't fucking care about none of that, bro. I, I just want to play a game that's good. And I kind of like how they did the, the Dragon's Dogma 2 lighting. Because I don't think it's ever got hella bright on me. But it also has ray tracing in there. And you can see like light come through the trees. You can see when the sun is actually moving across the sky. And it looks really fucking good. So like when you're just waiting around for like the sun to set, you can actually visually see the, the rays from the sun as it's going to set from, from fucking east to west. It's kind of fire. It's kind of fire. But hold on. What's our, what's our last bit of news, bro? Because we've been in here for like two hours. I only got like one, one bit of news left. Oh, yeah. It's fucking Gearbox. So... Yeah, Ori did. Ori always looks so fucking good, bro. I, their new game, No Rest for the Wicked, looks fucking phenomenal, bro. It looks phenomenal. I'm not even going to fake it. It looks so good. And I'm kind of upset that they, like Moon Studios, isn't owned by Xbox. I'm kind of upset they didn't make that, they didn't make that purchase. Because Moon Studios is talented, bro. But they did want to go multi-platform. They said that. After Ori, they wanted to go multi-platform. Microsoft... You know, gave them their blessings. Go do what you do. And now we're about to see what they're capable of. But No Rest for the Wicked looks fucking good, bro. From our direction, anyway. But yeah, news. Gearbox. Gearbox has been sold just like Saber and Active have been sold from uh, Embracer Group. They sold right to take two. Which is hella strange. Because Take Two is the company that literally helped Gearbox become who Gearbox is. So it's strange that they even got bought by Embracer in the first place. But it's kind of one of those things that, like, you know, it could have been if they just been there the whole time. That's how I feel about Bioware and Microsoft not picking them up when they literally created like three masterpieces for Xbox. Back to back to back masterpieces for Xbox. And then they got bought by fucking EA. And it's like, Microsoft, what the fuck were you thinking letting them walk out the door? It's one of those things, like, when I think back, retrospective. But Gearbox is with Take-Two now. They only cost $500 million, which is surprising that Gearbox is that cheap of a company. After all the things they've done with Borderlands, and, I mean, I guess Battleborn was trash. But, um... You say you played Borderlands 1 and 2 a lot, but you didn't like 3 or Tiny Team's Wonderland. See, I played Borderlands 1 a lot. I didn't like anything after Borderlands 1. And, it, I mean, Borderlands 2 I liked a little bit. But the characters that didn't hit the same for me. Borderlands, the pre-sequel, was hot garbage, but Claptrap was an OP class. Not even going to lie to you. Claptrap was fun as hell to play. But the pre-sequel was ass. It was an ass game. It was an ass story. Borderlands 2 story was mostly better. Because it was like the whole handsome Jack thing. It was all happening. Tiny Tina's Wonderland. I did not play that. Don't Borderlands have a 3? Borderlands 3, I definitely didn't play. I did play it. I think I own it. 
Hold on, let me see if I own that game. I think I own Borderlands 3. And I really did not like it. And I was like, fuck, bro. I thought Borderlands was like... Back. How many Borderlands games are I own? Fucking Balin's Wonderland. That's just garbage. All the banjos... All the Bard's Tales, all the Batmans, Battlefield, fucking Ben 10, all the Bioshocks, Black, Blue Dragon. Oh, yeah, Microsoft did release a Blue Dragon active background for Xbox in, uh, in remembrance of Akira Toriyama. And that shit is actually kind of fire that they did that. Yeah, I own Borderlands 3. And I don't remember shit about that game. I think I played the Beastmaster. I think I played the Beastmaster. And I think I had an alright time with the Beastmaster. But I hated the new way to level up. Like that new level up system. It was... It was off, bro. Everything felt off about Borderlands after the first game. Use that game lives and dies off a of gameplay and not story. Borderlands 3, a little focus too much on story. Yeah, they tried to push the, like, the, like, YouTube live streamer kids, like, the twins. And they were being all theatrical and shit for, like, the fans online. And you were just, like, caught up in this shit. It was a weird story. And, I mean, Borderlands has always been kind of weird. But the Vault Hunter grind felt different than everything else they wrote. Because what the fuck was Borderlands 2 about? It was about a whole lot of nonsense with Handsome Jack. What was Borderlands 3 about? The fucking live streamer twins. And I'm like, we're vault hunters. You're supposed to be hunting vaults. The first game was about the vault hunters, bro. Y'all ragtag group. Y'all got together. Y'all hunting vaults. Y'all just so happened to work well together. And you put in that fucking work. You get to the vault, you find alien technology, you kill big alien, you save world, good game, good ending. Now, I don't know what the hell is going on in Borderlands. And they announced they're making another Borderlands because Borderlands came from 2K Games and Gearbox. They 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 published all of the Borderlands games. So now that they're literally bought by Take-Two and they're a subsidiary of Take-Two and 2K what are they going to do to Borderlands, bro? Because we know 2K created the shift key system. They created the random fucking loot box system. The thousands and thousands of guns technology that they had. They kind of ruined that. By making all these variations of the same fucking ones. So now every gun isn't a different gun no more. Because it used to be every gun in Borderlands was unique. There was no two guns that was the same. Remember, that was the Borderlands slogan on Borderlands 1. In every other game, you could find the same gun like two or three times. It might be something cosmetically different, and I think that's what they start getting over on. Because it'll be the exact same gun. Cosmetically, it might be different. And that was it. But in Borderlands 1, every gun was different. Either it shot different, it had different stats on it, it had different fucking bullet velocities and shit. It was it was so many other things, different magazine sizes. Every gun you picked up was a different gun. And it felt good. I don't know. Borderlands coming back, Gearbox being at home with 2K and Take Two. I mean, it makes sense for them to be at home with 2K and Take Two because that's where they started from. I just don't feel like they are gonna make a good game with 2K and Take Two. Because I think they're gonna fall back into the same shit they've been falling back into. When 2K was publishing their games anyway. And that's the shift key system. Which ruined fucking Borderlands. Can they get away from that? No. Because now they literally live right next door to them. They live in the same house now. In the same apartment building. I think Borderlands is done for. And they're going back to Borderlands. Because that's the only name Gearbox has made for themselves. In all this time of being developers. Which is crazy to say. 
Because Gearbox should be a bigger name. But they have nothing to show for besides Borderlands. They have nothing to show for besides Borderlands. And I know they're probably somebody's favorite development studio. They probably make good games for a select few people. But for me, who used to be a Borderlands fan from the first one, no. They definitely lost it. Because even when I played the re... I think I played the remastered version of the first game that they re-released, Borderlands 1. And that shit was ass. And I'm like, what the fuck did they do to it? They changed a lot. of They changed Angel. They changed the way the fucking story rolled out from the beginning. They added, they added weird-ass features to the game that shouldn't have been there. They did a whole lot of things. They changed a whole lot in Borderlands 1. I did not like that shit. So I dropped the fuck out of the remake of the game. Or the remaster of the game. And it's kind of... Did they say The Sims 5? Is that real? Hold on. I just saw something about The Sims 5. Where the fuck that Sims 5 thing go? What the fuck? Oh look, now they're out of the fucking, uh, out of the, uh, what you call it? Out of the honeymoon phase of fucking Baldur's Gate. Because it's like, oh, look, Baldur's Gate not leads into a fucking renaissance of classic RPGs. It's, yeah, it definitely wasn't. You said not sure if you played any Borderlands games. Maybe you would check them out. The collection. Is it still on Game Pass? That's a good question. Is the Handsome Jack collection still on Game Pass? Let me go look. Where am I? Game Pass. They added so much shit to Game Pass. Uh, I don't think it's on Game Pass no more. That's kind of wild. The Pandora's Boss Collection is $30 right now. That shit's $150 and it's $30 right now. That is crazy. I mean, they get those games are old as hell, but like, that's a fucking discount right there. Now, I think the Hells of Jack Collection is gone from Game Pass. Plague's Tale, Ori. Should I play Evil West? I heard this game was actually kind of fun. I've just been playing so much Dragon's Dogma that I can't stop. The screenshots are kind of good, though. I could probably try to play it in the cloud. I also need to go finish Redfall. You said it's just a money grab? Yeah, it definitely is. Because it shouldn't have been co it shouldn't have cost that much anyway. The fucking quarry is in Game Pass. Hot Wheels 2 is in Game Pass. I like Hot Wheels 2. You said there's a ruins and that place should release. Places of Fob Pro. They're going to release a pro version of a lot of games to resell. I mean, PlayStation is the resale kings, bro. So if they could legit produce another piece of hardware that the fans would bite on to go buy it. And so they could re-release content for 
a fucking upgrade fee or just fucking seventy dollars outright again? I think they're going to do it, and it's up to the PlayStation fans to tell their ass we're not buying this shit, and Sony fails. But are the PlayStation fans going to actually do that? We don't know. Because there's no way Xbox is releasing like a pro version of the Series X. And motherfuckers are going out to buy that shit. No. No. Because there's no way you make two consoles and you make a third one that's better than the other two. No. Because you didn't even use the first two. Sony was released a PS4 games as PS5 games for how long? I don't think they had their first PS5 game yet. I think Stellar Blade might be the first one. And it's not even AAA. And then they're going to release a pro version of their console. How much hardware is Sony going to release? Because it's not making sense over here. They released the PS5 console, digital and physical. They released a VR headset that nobody bought. They released the, the, the handheld cloud device that probably nobody bought. Even though they kind of lie and say they sold a lot of them. No, they didn't. They probably sold a lot than they thought they would. They're not selling millions of these hoes. Of course, they're lying about that shit. And now a fucking pro version of a console. They released fucking earbuds. They released an Elite controller that still doesn't fucking work. Sony's releasing a lot of fucking hardware, bro, and no software to show for it. But remakes and remasters. How many new things have Sony released? It is a it is a sad day on the PlayStation platform. Rather you see it or not. You said, did you see the new sales for console releases by VGC? No, I haven't. What did it say? I really don't be looking at that shit high key. I'm not even going to lie to you. People are putting lock on systems in fucking Dragon's Dogma. See, the modders are really just making the game simple as hell. They're really westernizing the fuck out of Dragon's Dogma because they don't like Japanese RPGs, bro. That's exactly what it, that what it shows. They don't like Japanese RPGs, so they're westernizing. They're putting a lock on system so they can actually hit targets because they can't just fucking aim their character. They need they need a central lock on. You said the console numbers are about five million units apart. You said the common numbers are five million units apart. Wait, so Xbox and PlayStation are five million units apart? That's what? Is that true? See, now I kind of want to. Now I want to kind of. I kind of want to see it. I kind of want to see that. Hmm. Marvel Rivals? Smiles Gate shut down? Console hardware? Based on what? Because right here it says it's like fucking. 20 million apart. 30 million apart. 
Yeah, you saw it on Twitter. You said the Switch are selling like crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The Switch has 138 million consoles sold. It says PS5 has 55 and Xbox has 28. And that's as of March. So it hasn't refreshed for April. But as of March is what it's saying. Like Xbox is behind PlayStation by 30. And PlayStation is behind fucking Nintendo Switch by fucking... 80. But I mean, Xbox doesn't care about the console sale anyway. Not the, you know. Not the, not the unique, not the unique, but not the, uh, what you call it. Not the traditional console seller. They're not trying to be like that. So they're not worried about selling 30 million. Because they probably have way more active users than Sony could ever get. Oh, you said the month charts. Okay. I mean, it makes sense for the month charts. But year to date has been kind of... Why has Final Fantasy VII been so, like, defeated, bro? Because I, I haven't seen any big news, any big updates like they did for Final Fantasy VII, the remake, for Rebirth. I've heard none of that shit. The, oh, we sold fucking 10 million in seven hours. Like, I've heard none of that for Rebirth, bro. Nobody bought that fucking game. I barely seen it on YouTube. Like, Final Fantasy Rebirth was supposed to be the biggest thing for PlayStation. And I swear, Helldivers killed that game. Because nobody bought it. It's so crazy that nobody bought it. They might buy it in retrospect. They might go back and play it once they're done playing everything else. But, like, at launch, I mean, I don't know how it's going to be a Game of the Year candidate when nobody talked about your game. Like, when it didn't get the, when it didn't make the splash you thought it would. Razorone came out and that shit was trash. But I thought, I thought it looked trash when Sony first showed it. I'm like, Razorone looked real fucking bad. And it turned out to be a PlayStation 3 game. But yeah, I don't be I don't be watching the charts too much. Except when it becomes actual gaming news. But like when motherfuckers be pulling up console sales for Xbox, they're like, oh well, Xbox losing in console sales. Yes, they are. Not final flop. <laughs> I don't know how it flopped though, because this looked at like the best looking one. But it seems PlayStation gamers are done buying Final Fantasy games after 16 being ass, running like fucking garbage, and PlayStation still getting put over the top because of it. I wouldn't touch another Square in this game either. Square has released two games for PlayStation last year, and they both were ass. And then it released two this year. One of them was definitely ass. And it was a clone of Splatoon. Now, what else are they making? Final Fantasy VII's Rebirth. Haven't heard anything about it. I ain't heard it was bad, but I haven't heard it was good either. So it's, it's kind of one of those things. Dragon's Dawn was probably winning game of the year. Well, I guess, I guess... Hellblade comes out in a month, doesn't it? Hellblade comes out in a month. So they might... Hellblade might win Game of the Year. Because what's going to stop it? Dragon's Dogma might. But if Hellblade comes out and is as good as it looks, even if it's only fucking 20 hours long, I don't fucking care how long it is. But if it's as good as it looks, if it looks as good as they showed it look, if it plays as well as they say it plays... And the story is still Senua, and she's still, you know, going through her shit, striving to be better every day, is probably getting game of the year. Unless the critics have anything to say about it, because, you know, if it's an 85 on Xbox, it's a 91 on PlayStation. That's kind of how we, we see this shit on the internet. So, if, if Hellblade gets a fucking 85, like every other Xbox game before, then we know it's a 91. We all know it's a 91. And it's probably going to be a masterpiece.
We saw it with Hi-Fi. We saw it with Hi-Fi, bro. But yeah. I think it's going to be it for Gaming News Weekly. That's all I had to talk about. Unless I got some other news I haven't covered. Because I haven't heard all of it. And some of it I kind of just like skimmed over. Because I'm like, okay, that doesn't sound like anything I want to really internalize. Put anything forward on. Oh yeah, Larian's leaving Baldur's Gate. I forgot that was happening. They're dropping a Baldur's Gate IP. But yeah, that's fine though. They need to drop the Baldur's Gate IP. They do not need that hoe. They need to go back to Divinity. You see, I've been checking out Elden Ring's DLC. Oh yeah, for sure. That's the reason I went back to Elden Ring and I start playing it again. I was live streaming it. Because uh, I kind of want to play the Mesmer DLC. I don't know if I'm going to get to it, though, because I still got to finish Elden Ring. But uh, maybe, maybe I could, maybe I could, maybe I could get there. Maybe I could play that motherfucking DLC. I don't know. I'm still waiting on Liza P DLC high key. Liza P was so far, bro. Liza P was Liza P was so far, and then they got Alice in Wonderland coming up next. Not Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz. They got Wizard of Oz coming up coming up next with Dorothy. <clears throat> you said I got another game for me to revisit, Dead Space Two. Dead Space fucking two. You did you not see my video on Dead Space One? If you haven't, go watch my video on Dead Space 1. And you'll see. <laughs> you said they're gonna make Dorothy ugly watch. I don't see. I don't think I don't think Neo is. And uh I don't think they're gonna pull some shit like that. Cause Big Nook was that guy, bro. My nigga Pinocchio Liza Pete, that shit was fire. My nigga had drip too. They made sure that nigga Pinocchio had drip the whole game. I don't think they're going to hold Dorothy. There's no way they're going to do that. I don't know what the fuck model they're going to try to try to use to, to like create her in-game form. Because, I mean, nobody's ever tried to, to make a, a Dorothy game. A Wizard of Oz fucking Souls-like. So, I mean, Neo is up for, you know, they could do anything with it. But I don't, there's no way they're going to make her a fucking dog, bro. They're not going to butcher her. I don't think they will because they want to sell the game. I don't think they're going to over-sexualize her, but I think they're going to... Or Dishonored Definitive Edition. See, I played through Dishonored one time, I think. I think I played through Dishonored one time. I haven't played a stealth game since Dishonored, though. So I'm not that patient no more. I could try to go back to play Dishonored. For, for some reason, I didn't like Dishonored 2. And I think it's because I played as Emily. And I I don't say that. It's because like, oh, it's Emily because she's a girl. It's because her powers are trash compared to Corvo's. I think that's what it is. You say you're going to go back to Prey? See, I have so many games on my plate right now. Hold on. Let me, let me look at my quick resume real quick. How many games are in my quick resume right now? I guess it's only four now. All the other ones kind of like timed out. Or because I haven't played them for so long. So I got Banishers on me. I got War Tales on me. I got Dragon's Dogma 2 on me. And uh... What the hell is that? Oh, that's fucking... Never mind. There's only three. Because Paragon... Not Paragon. Fucking uh... What's this called? Predecessors doesn't count. Because it's probably going to kick me out the lobby right when I get back in it. I can't definitely go back to Prey though. I enjoy Prey. After I kind of started learning how to how to get around the game and like the mimic thing, I'm learning. I'm learning the game, so I'm gonna definitely get back to it. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna leave y'all hanging on it. But I've been playing a lot of Dogma, and I'm almost. You say me? <laughs> you say I recently spot like a complete Resident Evil Village. You say now you onto the DLC. See, I heard the Winters, like, Rosemary's DLC was actually really good. 
And I heard Resident Evil fucking 9 is coming. And it's going to be the end of the trilogy. Did you hear about that? That was that was news like this morning, I think. That Resident Evil 9 is a... Uh, Resident Evil 9 is coming. I think it's coming next year and it's the end of the trilogy. I think it's a good idea. Like the end of trilogy, the way they started it. The three game run. You say it's crazy how Village grew on you? See, everybody I know that played Village enjoyed the fuck out that game. They enjoyed the fuck out of that game because once they, like, after the after the, the, the like, Countess's, like, mansion, after they got through the vampire part and you get into, like, the normal Village, you start walking around, doing all the puzzles, and you start going to the other locations. People was like the game got kind of breezy after that. I think the I think the hardest part to get through was Lady Dimitrescu's house. I think that was like the hardest part to, to get through anyway. Cause everybody else, like it was breezy after that. You start getting new weapons, you start getting upgrades, and then you like go through like the gimmick battles. Because the gimmick battles are way easier than fucking Lady Dimitrescu ass trying to find the right bullets to kill her with. You said, yeah, put deodorant on your hands to play Resident Evil Village. I, bro, I feel that. They're, like, when I played games, like, like, when I was playing Prey, when it turned into a fucking horror game on me, bro, when the mimics start to just transform around me and I didn't know what was what, come on now, bro. I was shook. The same thing when I was playing Scorn, bro. I ain't finished Scorn. I probably should. But Scorn start getting under my skin, bro. The game's so nasty looking. It's so nasty looking. It's so good. The art direction is amazing. The little fucking hand in my rib and shit. But some of those parts, some parts get to me. And I'll be in that motherfucker like, God damn, I got to walk down this corridor, bro. You say a village is nothing compared to seven and fear factor. Scorn was a nasty game, bro. It looks so good. It's so it's so fucking. What do you call it? I wanted to call it primitive for some reason, but it's so like organic. Everything's like living flesh, bro. It's so organic, and I I liked it. I was like, damn, this shit is so nasty, but like, it's intriguing to see somebody's image be promoted like it was in scorn like it's, it's nasty as hell but like it looks fucking good you said body horror you said what seven was the definition of true horror resident evil seven was the that was the baker house wasn't it baker house was seven village was eight yeah, okay. You said it's 7 in Game Pass? I don't think it is anymore. I know 2 and 3 is in Game Pass right now. No, 7 is not in Game Pass no more. It is $20, though. So it's not relatively expensive right now, but like, yeah, it's not a game pass no more. I think two and three is in game pass right now. It was also more like the action ones than the horror ones. That's why I really want them to redo five. I know people are so kind of pressed on it. You said this is why you need a handheld. <laughs> Understandable. I mean, if cloud gaming was a little bit better. You just bought Resident Evil 5? Bro, I have Resident Evil 5. I played the fuck out of Resident Evil 5. Well, I played, a, I played a hell out of it on 360. I haven't played it much on like the Xbox One version. But I do have the Xbox One version. I just haven't played hellas of it. 
Because I like playing that motherfucker co-op. Co-op Resi 5 is amazing, bro. It's a breezy experience. And y'all can just go dual shotgun and, and just blitz the fuck out of all the enemies. You don't have a problem in that game. But yeah, they need they we need that remake. Cause boulder punching Chris, 4K60, new Resi. Come on out, bro. That nigga Albert Wesker, bro. Every one of his cutscenes re-rendered 4K. Come on out, bro. He gonna be clean as fuck. That nigga Wesker was a clean ass villain, bro. He was one of the cleanest villains of my childhood. I remember that nigga like every day. Fucking Jill Valentine in the in the latex suit doing backflips. We need that back, bro. We need that back in 4K 60 glory. But that's what they don't want to touch it, bro. They're like, ah, oh, nah. You know, the, the, the diversity people, the inclusivity people, they're going to get on their ass. You said you played it years ago. But you gave up on it? You said since you purchased it, it's because you praise because of the praise it received? I'm going to see if the hype is justified. I mean, the hype is definitely justified, but it's not a horror game. And I think that's why it gets kind of the praise it, it does. Because when I went into Resident Evil 5, I thought it was going to be a horror game. You say it's also been enhanced, has it? Has it? Hold on. Hold on, bro. There was a PC exclusive No Mercy mode? I don't remember that. I don't know if it's actually been enhanced, though. I punched the boulder 10 out of 10. These fucking... <laughs> the fucking reviews on the Xbox store is amazing, bro. You said Resident Evil 5. Remake next. You said, I can't wait to punch boulders in all this remake glory. I right, bro. Everybody's waiting for Chris Redford to punch boulders in 4K. That's everybody's waiting on that. 4K 60 Chris Redfield punching Boulder is exactly what we want. I forgot they did have outfits in this game. <laughs> Fucking tattoo Chris Redfield. You said peep the description. Look, tattoo Chris Redfield. Little Red Riding Hood Shiva. Fire, bro. Fire, bro. That shit's clean. This game was so good. Peak game. Such a peak game. I hate when I restart the fucking, uh, the, the chat. It shouldn't do that. Oh, yeah, it did say that. Okay. Yeah, I'll see what you mean. Diablo 4 got an update. What the fuck did they update? What did they add? I haven't been paying attention. I've been playing a whole lot of... um. I've been playing a whole lot of... um. Is that today? Today what? Dragon's Dogma 2. I can, I high key should download uh, Resident Evil 5. That shit is so good. Or I should play the quarry. I should play the quarry for the channel. I think that should be kind of clean. Get a whole lot of motherfuckers killed.
Yeah, I think it got one today because I, my Xbox haven't downloaded it yet because I've been live streaming. So I think it got one today. I don't know what the hell the update is about, though. I couldn't tell you. You say you downloaded the Quarry only because it was on Game Pass? Game Pass strikes again. Bro, I'm looking at the dynamic backgrounds. I didn't know they had all these bitches in here. They got hellas of these hoes in here. Like, that shit is far, bro. I didn't know these shits existed. I mean, the FIFA one's kind of ass. I'm not even going to fake it. FIFA one's actually kind of ass. The Chainsaw's Kitchen, bro. These motherfuckers are actually kind of fired. The last time I seen, I think it was Forza Horizon that got added. That was the last one I seen. The last dynamic one I seen. But now, I mean... Skull and Bones got one, which, come on now, bro. Throw this shit in the trash. The Avowed Key Art is here. I didn't know they fucking put this shit on a dynamic. I wanted this background, too. And they said, hey, we're going to get it to you. Why didn't they announce this? That the Key Art for Avowed has a dynamic background. Because that shit's fire, bro. Whoever, whoever created that needs a goddamn raise, bro. Because their artistic, their artistic loins, bro, is is growing, nigga. That's just far. You say you tried the Corey demo a while back, you shelved it. But now the full game and game pass. Yeah. Cause I mean I think I played the demo as well. And I think it was alright. I think the the story they were they were running was kind of weird. But it was just a demo. Cause it was with like the crash car. Cause it was like the prequel to like the actual quarry. I think that's what the demo was. So you didn't play the actual characters in the game. You played like the characters before the game starts. Like in the past or something like that. But that motherfucking key art is fire, bro. And then, you know, the 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 original series of fucking Fallout from Amazon. Do they have Chiefs? Live serve, I mean, live action in here. I don't think they do. Is the vault actually closing? Is it gonna close completely? Now, I need a big, a big ass rat roach to come out. That is actually fire. The vault opens and closes. That's actually really fucking good. And then, Akia Toriyama, RIP my nigga. The blue dragon background. With my nigga blue dragon just flexing. Nigga got a fucking 12 pack. <laughs> why, why wouldn't they upset back then when blue dragon had like the, the biggest lats? Nigga, his triceps are fucking massive. And he just flexed her with a 12 pack. How do we beat that, nigga? I've been in the gym a while. I would never look like Blue Dragon. He's over-exaggerated. Make him skinny and scrawny. Why should he be flexing on me? But yeah, that's just far. I might go with the Blue Dragon one. I just started that playthrough, too. Then all the Xbox Central ones. All the abstract ones. I ran out of Series X and S1. That's just out of fire. I did not see all these before, bro. It's crazy how long I've had this console since I was like one of the first niggas to get the console because I got mine earlier than most people. I don't, I didn't remember seeing all this. The 360, like, boot up. Fire, bro. 
The old 360 days. The OG. The OG is still probably the best, bro. That little fucking orb floating around. That shit's good. That shit's good. I'm about to go with the blue dragon one, high key. I'm just go with blue dragon. Because uh, I feel like it. Look at that guy. Blue rag, blue dragon just standing 10. You said your background is grounded? That was a grounded one? I didn't even see it. It must have been further above. It was just further above, probably. God damn, I restarted it again. That's fine. It's going to go away. But yeah, hold on. How long have we been live streaming? Three hours? All right, we got to end it right here. So I'm about to end it. So uh, thank you all for coming out. Make sure to that like button, subscribe. It's been Gaming News Weekly. It's been a while, bro. I need to get more consistent again. I mean, news needs to get more consistent too. Because if I have something to cover, I'll be in this motherfucker streaming. Non-stop. But sometimes it, it just be nothing to cover. I could play games or something in that same time slot. But, like, I like doing gaming news weekly because I like covering the news. The real gaming news, getting down to the nitty gritty. So, yeah, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe. And uh, I'll see y'all in the next one.